so it begins. The first stop of the Crankworx FMBA Slope Style World Championship. Veteran riders pushing technicality to unimaginable new levels. Fresh blood looking to step onto the podium. Each taking their shot at the oh so elusive triple crown of slope style. An iconic course with a 100% track record for radness. The Crankworx Rotorua slope style in memory of Magaza starts right now. Cam, Tyler, what do you guys say? We ready to get this thing going? Yes, Michaela. The answer is absolutely yes. After the day full of delays yesterday, this is a great sign. We've got blue sky. I'm joined by my brother Tyler McCall this year as our slope style specialist. Tyler, you got to feel like this is a little bit of a case of Magaza shining some light down on us. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Everyone was a little skeptical yesterday with the rain, um, not thinking that it would even happen today. But the course dried out. The build crew did an awesome job keeping it tarp, keeping it dry, and uh, fixing it up, filling all the ruts, and the riders are loving it. And we've already seen some insane stuff in practice. And we had this happen a few years ago, just torrential downpour for hours and hours. And then all of a sudden, some ca sun comes out of nowhere. And every time that happens, it just feels like that's the big man up top with his flowing mane his luscious locks, giving us some sunshine. This guy, his positive attitude was so contagious. And anytime we show up here, we're doing this in memory of the big man, our buddy, Kelly McGarry. Well, the big questions coming into this event, we've never had a repeat winner. Will that finally happen? People who've won it, a list goes on like Nikolai Rogakin, Brandon Semenuk, Brett Reeder, a whole lot of North Americans. We've never had anybody other than a North American win this event. So we're wondering if either of those two things are going to happen here today. Take a look at Brett Reeder, Ty. Does he have what it takes to repeat today? I can't even explain how on it he was yesterday. We had torrential downpours. There was flash floods. The course was tarped. As soon as they untarped it and the riders checked the course, he did one run down and Cork 720 bar spun the last jump on that first run, which is just insane. He didn't even do a feeler run. We saw him doing oppo double whips in practice, flip bar spin, opposite tail whips, and he just seems in tip-top form right now. His knee's healing up, he's feeling better, and uh, he just wants to go. Brett Reeder with bangers as warm-ups. That's just typical Reeder style. An exact opposite style to that is a guy named Nikolai Rogakin. How's he looking? Nikolai did a twister in day one of practice. Uh, in years past, that was his banger. They'd only pull out in the finals. And he was doing it first day. And I, I followed him a little bit in practice and thought he was just going to keep it chill. But he never does. He was doing cash rolls in front of me, double tail whips. And it's kind of hard to focus on what you're doing when you're following Nikolai because he's just so insane. So those are our two riders who are looking to repeat here today. They actually faced off in the Battle Royale that went down in the history books of slope style, probably the best face-off we've ever seen. This is Nikolai's run from Innsbruck. Did this one blow your mind, Ty? I think this is the best slope comp we've ever seen. And just the level of athleticism, and uh, there's no rivalry between these guys. You can see Brett's face after Nikolai landed. There it is. Look at him. He wasn't like, oh, man, now what am I going to do? He was just stoked for Nikolai. And they're both just pushing the sport together. Their approaches are polar opposite, so it's always great to see them battle head-to-head -head on a slope style course. We haven't seen that since last season, so this will be a big moment for us. But it would be a huge moment if a European was actually able to win a slope style stop. It's been since 2012. Thomas Janan was the one to do it. No Euros won here. Can he do it? It's been a while, but Thomas Janan has only been progressing over the last, what was that, six years ago, which sounds crazy. So he's a bit of a veteran now, and he definitely has what it takes. So last year's competition was a doozy, to say the least. I know we can expect the same today based on practice. We always know that the level is going to be elevated. This is how we start the season. This is everybody's favorite course. And the dirt here, the weather here, March, you're not riding slope style in very many places in the world other than Rotorua, New Zealand right now. Let's take a look back at some highlights from 2017. The 2017 Crankworx Slope Style World Tour provided the planet with some of the most epic action to date. Kicking off in Rotorua, New Zealand, it was powerhouse Nikolai Rogatkin that drew first blood by claiming his maiden victory at Crankworx. He was flanked by podium rookies Torquato Testa and young Swede Emil Johansson. 
Leger France saw the return of the injured Brett Reeder. With style in abundance, the Canadian celebrated the perfect comeback. Having enjoyed the champagne celebration in New Zealand, Johansson was back for more. Polish charger Simon Godziak claimed his first Crankworks podium with a brilliantly ballsy run. As the only two riders who could claim the Triple Crown, all eyes were on Rogatkin and Reeder as the tour moved to Innsbruck, Austria. Reeder piled on the pressure in run one. Rogatkin took the bait but was unable to surpass Reeder with his first run. In run two, Rogatkin went for broke, releasing his signature twister, a triple tail whip, and finishing off with a cash roll tail whip. Nikolai snatched the lead and put the pressure right back on Reeder. Putting on an oppo masterclass, the titan of tech threw down a gauntlet of a run, leaving the judges with a real job on their hands. By the slightest of margins, progression won over precision, and Rogatkin claimed the spoils. Also new to the Crankworks podium, Frenchman Thomas Lemoyne claimed the third spot of the Champagne Stairs. Red Bull Joyride once again proved to be the Triple Crown dream crusher. Rogatkin was on course for a stellar run until a wind gust took his wheels right out from under him. Four-time Red Bull Joyride winner Brandon Semenuk managed to notch his tally up to five. Swede Emil Johansson continued his consistent form with his third podium of the season and in doing so claimed the Crankworks Slope Style overall title. Well, that's how the season looked last year. We start out a whole new one, the 2018 version right now. And as we said, this is the only place to be in March if you're a mountain biker, especially if you're one of the best slope style riders in the world. If you've never been to New Zealand, we'll take a look at this map. We're floating in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. We're in a town called Rotorua. This place has the best dirt you could ever imagine. A whole lot of riding out here and one of the best slope style courses ever. Tyler, you actually had an opportunity to take a couple runs on this thing for our GoPro course preview with Nikolai Rogatkin. Let's check it out. What's up everyone? Nikolai Rogatkin here with Tyler McCall. We're here at the Crankworks Rotorua Slope Style in memory of Magaza. About to do a course preview with Mr. Nikolai here. A little worried, never know what this kid's gonna do, but it's gonna be a good time. Let's do it. Yep. Starting on the start deck here, which was originally built by Magaza himself. Nice and trick, but we saw some big ones on that last year. There's a bit of a change to the course this year, a little shark fin. Moves things forward, keeps it tight. Nikolai with the double whip. New right hip here, that used to be the cannon, hip to the right. Now the cannon hips to the left. Nikolai with the 360. On off here, you'll see some tricks on. Real scary drop to trick off. It's a nice steep landing. Long and low, looks like you're gonna hit the gondola. The last trick jump. Nikolai with a big backflip. You know, he's gonna do some crazy stuff on that on finals day. And that's the course. There it is. There it cool. is. <laughs> Sick. How about that course, Ty? You can't help bring your bike down here and get on the course. You have your bike from Dual Speed and Style. Where'd you find time to get that course preview? I snuck a little bit in. It was during practice for Speed and Style, so it was a little tough, but I just wanted to ride that course because it's so fun. Anytime you get an excuse to ride a professional level slope style course, it's going to be a good time, and I forgot how much fun they are. You can't help yourself. All the riders regard this as their favorite course. Luckily, we have our own Michaela Gatto standing by with the riders. Who do you got for us, Michaela? Brett Reeder, you missed out here last year um, due to injury, but you came back for Leger. We were all wondering what you were going to do. You ended up winning that one. Innsbruck, really close second place, and then you re-injured yourself. Let's talk a little bit about the rehab and what the measures you took to get back on the bike. Yeah, it's been, uh, it's been a long winter um, off the bike. Uh, I was off my bike for three months, just strictly like letting all the, the ligaments and, and the joint heal from all the trauma I put it through in the season. And uh, yeah, but I've, I've, uh, I've been strong in the gym and, and uh, two months on my bike um, before this contest. So I, I feel pretty good right now. And uh, where exactly did you spend that time on the bike? Because I know you have a brand new slope style course in your backyard in your new house. But I mean, we're in Canada. We've had a lot of snow. Where do you ride in the winter? Um, well, 
Kind of like beginning of the winter, I road tripped back across the country where I grew up in Ontario. Um, and I spent all my time at Joyride 150, which is an indoor bike park in Ontario. That and then a couple trips uh, kind of around North America, Woodward, Tahoe. I went to Europe just, just before this. So um, I've been around um, having fun, getting back on my bike. And uh, yeah, I feel really good right now. Well, you're looking really solid. Best of luck out there. Thanks. Thanks, Michaela. Always interesting to hear how the riders prepare for the season. And right now, we're going to take a chance to check out the format, see how this comp's going to go down. Here we go, Tyler. What's the format looking like for Slope Style? Welcome to the 2018 Crankworks FMBA Slope Style World Championship Tour. This year, we have four stops all over the globe, starting out here in Rotorua, New Zealand. Competition format for the day is we have 14 riders getting judged on nine features on this course. Each rider gets two runs, and it's as simple as this. Your best run counts. Now, who's judging this? We have four judges, an esteemed panel comprised of former competitors and judges who have been doing this for years. These riders aren't only trying to win this event. It's all about the world tour. Lots of valuable points up for grabs, and our 2017 champ was Emil Johansson, who unfortunately isn't here due to injury today. Now, if you're the top scoring rider throughout the whole entire tour, you win the overall Slope Style Championship, $25,000. Now, if you win three of the four events, there's another $25,000 you can take home as well. So a lot on the line out here on the Crankworks FNBA Slope Style World Championship Series. Well, that's how the competition's gonna work out here today. But the competition for you, log on to fantasy.crankworks.com. It's just like fantasy football, but it's mountain biking, so it's way better, right? It's pretty fun, there's a lot of strategy involved. I would go for some of the underdogs, maybe Eric Fedko. He's probably not worth a lot on there, but he has a lot of potential to get out here. And this is his first crank work, so you can get him for pretty cheap, build a winning team. So don't go over budget, pick some dark horses, then pick some top dogs, yeah. but don't go over budget. And if you win, we're gonna send you on a trip to your choice of either Crankworks Innsbruck or Crankworks Leger. We'll get your airfare, your lodging. Hey, we'll even give you 500 bucks spending cash. So here's a look at the riders you have to choose for your fantasy Crankworks team. Who would you choose on here, Ty? Man, I don't know, my top picks, I wouldn't be able to afford them because they're heavy hitters, you know? But somebody, like I said, Eric Fedko, you can get for reasonable, but it's hard to not have Reader or Nikolai in there, but that takes a lot of budget. So it's a lot of strategy involved, but going to Crankworks every year, get to do it four times a year, and it's always my favorite four weeks out of the year. So I recommend trying, giving your hand, and uh, hopefully winning a crank to crank. It doesn't to cost Crankworks. anything to try. You might as well give it a whirl. Go to fantasy.crankworks.com, build your team. Well, the anticipation is building here. Take a look right now at how many people are lining this course. They were so incredibly loud yesterday every time a rider dropped. Anthony Missouri was doing lawn dart front flips, and you would hear the crowd erupt. You thought something bad happened. It was just something good. That's how into this competition these fans are. See Diego Cavrazasi right there on screen. Don't go away. We're getting closer. It's the Crankworks Rotorua Slope Style in memory of Magaza. Stick around.
Well, everybody get cozy on your couch because you're not going anywhere for a while. We're about ready to kick off the action here. The crowd here in Rotorua lining the course was standing around despite rainfalls. Now sunny skies, riders at the top. This is the Crankworx Rotorua slope style memory of Magaza and it starts right now. There's a special energy in the air here in Rotorua. The crowd is going wild out there. Nobody has any room for air here. Into the final feature, going for the twister. Can he land it? Land it, land it. And he got it! Every single rider here did a great job. What a huge run. We could have a new leader here. Happy to be in front of the home crowd and having a bit of fun. Oh, just barely too short. Well, here we go. It's the moment we've all been waiting for, and we've been waiting so long. We've been waiting since the finish of Red Bull Joyride last year. We waited all day yesterday, and now the moment is finally here. Look at this cast of characters we have, Tyler. I'm so excited. We only get to see these guys compete in a comp like this four times a year, and it's been a long wait. And just watching practice, I know it's going to be a good one. For so many reasons, we're excited. We're excited to see what the riders will bring to the table in the 2018 season, what they've been training for. We're excited to see the clash of the titans between Brett Reeder and Nikolai Ragakin. Youngsters new on the tour. There's one in this field today. His name's Eric Fedko, young rider out of Germany. And we're gonna look right now at our first rider of the competition. It's going to be Reed Boggs. Reed Boggs has had a bit of a tough off season. Um, he injured his shoulder district ride last year, healed it up, got to go to Rampage, hurt it again. So he's coming off shoulder surgery right now. He's been riding for a week. Here he comes, dropping out, start, step down. Nice backflip there. This is a new feature here. It's a shark fin. Tuck no hander, taking it a little bit easy so far. Nice flat spin table. Coming into the new right hip. It's easy with a whip. Another 360 on the cannon. Now coming into the on-off here. Backflip on. Suicide no-hander off. It's got to be tough with the shoulder injury, too. Yeah, he said it's been hurting him. Here, you see what he got on the last jump here. Backflip, one-footed can. So I talked to him earlier today. He said his goal here is to just have some fun, maintain some points. He just wants to stay on this world tour. So by being here, he's not ready to ride in 100% shape but he just wants to be here, stay on tour, have some good times. Well, Reed Boggs earned his way onto this tour last year. He was an alternate into this event a year ago. Got the nod the morning of the event, showed up, rode this competition, got a top to bottom run, a good result. He competed in all the rest of the events to an eighth place overall finish last year. Definitely earned his way here today, trying to maintain some points and stay on tour. So normally when we see Reed's riding, he's kind of a tech guy. He does a lot of bar spins. And he was saying that his right shoulder, he can't even do bar spins right now because throwing it hurts it too bad. So he had to switch up some of his oh. tricks. He's not doing the combos he wants to do. But that suicide no-hander right there was cool. Kind of a unique trick off a drop these days. Well, if you notice on that suicide no-hander, I'm guessing it must be his right shoulder. His left one is fully extended. His right one didn't make it all the way. So it's really impressive to see him actually dropping in and doing a top to bottom run, milking that injury. What's the score going to be for Reed Boggs as we wait? It's a 47 to start things off. Obviously not the score that he's looking for, but just by being here, he's getting points that are gonna keep him on the tour. Well, next rider in the start gate behind the traditional Maori Waharoa. These sculptures, great to have Littering the course here in Rotorua. Now, Logan Pete, a rider who's been competing here the last few years, he's had great results on the tour, really close to the podium. He's had a few fourths, fifths, but he's never got on the podium. We're waiting for that this season. He's so consistent and he's so dialed. And like you said, we've seen him get top fives. He just hasn't broken into that top three yet, and I think this might be the year for him. Logan Pete representing Ride or Die out of British Columbia. That was an opposite 360X up there, spinning his unnatural direction. Big backflip on that shark fin. That's actually a hip, so that's a tricky one there. Yeah. Wow. Oh, no. Getting a little off axis on that backflip tail up there, landing sideways, sliding out. Oh, Logan Pete, tough break there. Good to see him sliding out safely. These riders are just as good at crashing as they are at riding. 
<laughs> you, you can see how wet the sides of this course still are. The course builders have prepped the middle, making sure that the main line is at least fast and not slippery. But let's take a look back and see what went wrong on that backflip tail up on the step up. It looked like he just got a little bit off axis there. He's one to kind of roll his flip whips. That's kind of a unique way. Paddling into that lip. Yeah, it looks like maybe he thought he was under rotating there and tried to pull the flip around a little faster. And that makes him rotate a little more on the side axis and just wasn't able to stick the tires down It's a there. nice way of kind of sliding out of that like an ice skater. So coordinated all these riders and the top 14, the best riders on the planet. So difficult to get invited to the premier series, the Crankworx FMBA Slope Style World Championship. Looks now, like looks Logan's like... going to finish his run here. See if he can get enough speed off the can in there. There, now he's back online. He's just going to cruise down, clean himself up, and get ready for run two, I think. But maybe give us something big on the last jump. Well, big he's a showman, flipping the there. long and low. What's he got for the crowd here? Another backflip. He'll regroup and get back up to the top for his second run. I'm rooting for Logan, man. We don't see him make mistakes like that too often. Maybe it's just the nerves. It was hard for these guys sitting around all day, not knowing if the comp was on, if they were off. So hopefully he got the butterflies out, and we'll see him clean that up in second round. So I Logan like will look toward his second run score to get those valuable points for this four-stop tour, the Crankworx FMBA Slope Style World Championship. We kick things off here in Rotorua. Then, of course, the next three stops, two in Europe. We finish things off with the granddaddy of them all. Red Bull Joyride in Whistler, British Columbia, where it all started, this little experiment of an idea that's blossomed into such a world-class sport here. The next world-class rider we have dropping into this course is going to be Francis Simon Pages. He had such a great run going last year and just went down on a 360 double tail up on the last jump. Now he definitely could have potentially been on the podium last year if he was able to stomp that first run. Bar spin and tuck no hander on the new feature. Backflip bar spin on that step up. That takeoff is about 12 feet tall, I believe. That was an opposite double tail up. Spinning that is unnatural direction. 360 regular tail up on the cannon. So he's already getting some opposite tricks in there. Bar spin on. 360 off that big drop. Tuck no hander on the long and low. This is the jump that took him out last year. The Magaza money booter, what's it gonna be? That was a backflip opposite tail up. So this guy's playing those opposite cards and judges are always looking for those. So that was a good, unique run that kind of had a little bit of everything. Well, you predicted it properly. You said that you gotta expect double tail up variations from this guy, but also opposite variations. He threw out that opposite double tail. What makes this so hard? It's one of the most awkward tricks you can possibly do. Double tail ups are hard on their own. Opposite tail ups are hard on their own. And doing an opposite double tail up, it takes a long time to learn. And this kid's got him pretty darn dialed. You have to be ambidextrous in this sport. He's going the other way with this one too. So you can notice it's hard to tell to the untrained eye, but he kicked that with his front foot. So that was an opposite tail up. He spun that as unnatural direction. The judges will pick up on that and score it higher than a regular back foot tail up. Now you gotta be tricking both ways down the course for the opposites to really carry their weight. He had that 360 tail up, tail upping his natural direction. So that's what allows him to then branch out, fill it in, make it even by doing those opposite variations. We're waiting for the score for Simon Pejes right now. He will surpass Reed Boggs. It's a 64.25, so not yet in the 70s. Judges definitely starting their scale low, giving a lot of room for all the riders we have coming up next. So here's the rider we were talking about earlier, out of Germany. The only rider in here who's competing in his first stop on the Crankworx World Tour, Eric Fedko. He had this to say earlier. Am I ready? I'm trying to step it up in the second um, one. I will do a safe run. and trying to step it up in the second one. And yeah, my plan is to end up in the top six. So yeah. Well, look at all the confidence from that young rider. He's already got his strategy figured out. That's a great way to stay on tour. Get one in the bag and then send it in the second run. This kid loves to send it, doesn't he, Tyler? Wow, oh! 360 tail up on the start drop. I did not see him do that in practice. No way. Oh, well, no. He's not taking it easy. He's trying to get into that top six. Double truck driver there. Back this is apparently his mellow stuff. run. 
360 tail up on that new hip. He's already crammed so many tricks into this run. Tail up on the cannon. Back flip on. 360 oh. X up off. He said he was worried about spinning that, but he's still able to combo. No way. Big flat spin there. So much style. Magaza money booter. Back flip tail up. Hold it. Yeah. There we go. Eric Fedko. That's how you make your first Crankworx appearance right there. Yeah, it is action-packed run top to bottom with some tricks that really surprised us hearing that interview where he said he was going to take it easy in the first run. That was not taking it easy in my book. Starting it off here, what do we got? Such a risky move there, 360 tail up. He's spinning around, his bike's spinning around. Nice double truck driver there. Backflip double bar spin. So he had double combos on every jump there. The backflip double bar spin is actually a triple combo. I talked to him the other day, he said the only thing he still had to do was 360 that drop. He's a little scared, it's got a steep landing, but he's able to squeak a combo in there. Tell me why this flat spin matters on that jump. So that jump is long, it's about 40 feet long. And spinning on an axis like that makes it a little trickier. The longest jump on the course, it's kind of a setup for the last jump, the Magaza Money Booter. So when you trick that, it can be a lesser trick than what you do on the Magaza Money Booter, but linking it, that's where the real gold comes into play for the judges. Well, let's see where this score puts Eric Fedko in our list right here. New leader, 72.75. We're into the 70s officially here. This kid, what a great breakout performance. Can't wait to see what he's holding on to for run two. Well, back up to the top, our next rider. The youngest rider to ever land himself on a Crankworx slope style podium at the ripe age of 15. He's now blossomed into a consistent threat on the world tour. We're talking about Canada's Anthony Missouri. Anthony seems like he's coming into this event with more confidence than I've ever seen him with. Anthony Missouri starting things out. Backflip tail up on the step down there. Risky move, but he's able to pull it. Now that move has been a part of winning runs out here before to start things off. Front flip, tuck no hander on the step up there. Double tail up on the new hip. 360 onto the cannon. Here he comes into the on off. Back flip bar spin on. 360 down. Coming into the long and low, the big 40 footer. Back flip, what's he got for the last jump, Kim? This kid's going for the yeah. catch roll. Wow, Anthony Missouri finishing strong. The crowd loved that one. Big tricks all the way down. Now, Tyler, you said you caught up with him a little bit earlier, and he seems more mentally strong than ever. It looks like he's at the top of his game right now. Let's take a look back at some of the replays. So much going on in this run. Let's break it down. Backflip tail up there. I love the way he does those. He pulls straight back as opposed to rolling it on an axis. Which helps because he lands so straight, but flat spinning that hip so tough. It's also a bit of a step down. Big double tail up on the hip there. Now we didn't see any offos in his run, I don't believe. So the judges are going to take note of that. But also not too many repeats either. Backflip bar spin onto the on-off. There's a little risky. He was able to pull it off. And now, this is what he needed to maintain nice balance in his run. He had some flip combos, some three combos, and now this is essentially a front flip variation. It's a cork 720 on a forward axis. We call it the cash roll. It's a new trick to Anthony Missouri's lineup as of last season. Now he's consistently stomping it. First run here, nonetheless. I like that little celebratory yeah. handshake there. What he is was that? so ready to ride. Just wanted the comp to happen yesterday, but he was able to hold out and get one down today. Well, the judges deliberate after that banger run from Anthony Missouri. We're awaiting our scores. What's it going to be? Where will this place him in the rankings? Watch the bar climb. We have a new leader, 77.5, the score for Anthony Missouri. Let's send it down to Michaela Gatto. Thanks, Cam. I'm down here with Anthony. Yesterday was a bit of an emotional day, ups and downs, trying to get figure out if we were going to ride or not. Today doesn't look like you were worried at all about the conditions. How is it out there? How'd you feel? Uh, it's a little bit slick in some spots, as you can see. Some dudes are sliding around a bit, but uh, conditions are way better than yesterday, so we're stoked. Sun's out. Contest is going down. That cash roll was awesome. Where, uh, how are you feeling? Do we have anything else for uh, next run? Little insight? Yeah, maybe a few things. Add here and there. A couple things left in the back pocket there. You might see in round two. Front pocket. Front pocket. Sorry. <laughs>
Thanks, Michaela. Yeah, <laughs> those tricks are easier to grab if they're sitting in the front pocket. Anthony Missouri ready. If somebody told him he could go back up there and do his next run right now, I have a feeling he would have no problem with that. Well, we've had five riders drop in. There's a look at where we stand. Logan Pete in fifth, Reed Boggs fourth. We really started cranking things up with Simon Pages. Eric Fedko sitting in second place. And that run you just saw, Anthony Missouri sitting in the lead with a 77.5. The judges still leaving themselves a lot of room for riders like this next one, Max Fredrickson, a guy who not only spends so much time on the bike, but goes to the gym six days a week. Now still I tried minutes, to piggyback on a workout with him and I didn't fare so well. Take a look. We're just warming up. I'm gonna have a feeling in like five minutes, I'm probably gonna be hanging your guts. Well, yeah, probably. <laughs> Straight legs. Oh. oh, just as simple as that. Dude, it looks, you make it look so easy. All the stuff you do on the bike starts to make a little more sense. It looks like proper hell. Up. Up to here. <laughs> and then you go up with the body. I know, I'm supposed to. <laughs> up. <laughs> This gravity thing is bullshit. You feel all your stomach muscles for? Yeah. <laughs> That's very good for like stability. Windy joyride run. It's windy. The crowd is cheering. Last feature, one big last push through the finish line. <laughs> now a finish line interview. <sighs> no comments. <laughs> Max Fredrickson, I can't stress enough how strong that kid is. I can only feel strong through the first workout. After that, I was a complete and total noodle, but that's what enables him to be so tough on the bike and get those combos in. He rides every day, he works out every day. True professional, this guy. Cam, as your brother, I think you need to go to the gym a little more often. Here comes Max. <laughs> Max Fredrickson starting things off with a 360 double bar spin. Triple combo on that step down. I believe that's the first one we've seen today. And then a little low on that flat spin there. Double tail, now he was triple tail whipping that in practice, so he was looking for something a little more there. That's that strategy we talk about, getting a first run in the bag. Strong so far for Max Fredrickson. Double tail up on the cannon, that's the biggest trick we've seen on that. Opposite 360 on, truck driver down, biggest trick we've seen off so far. Tail up on the long and low. What's he got for us on the Magazzi money, Magazzi money booter? Oh, oh no! Shoot, he's going for a backflip, bar spin a tail up there, and things just got, got a little offline on him. Now this is why he trains so hard in the gym. It's not only for the tricks, the riding, but it's also to be able to take those hard hits when the tricks don't go well. Going for that backflip, bar spin to tail whip, a trick that he has on lock, but it's so hard to link all these tricks down. Nine consecutive features. You see Martin Soderstrom right there, fellow Swede, slope style legend. Not happy to see his boy take a digger right there. All the riders looking on, they have a monitor at the top. Well, obviously that run didn't finish the way Max had hoped, but let's take a look back at how he started out. So incredibly strong, Tyler. Things were going pretty well for him. Now, collarbone injuries are what he's been battling. Gonna let the medical crew check him out, but look back at this run. That double truck driver on the start start feature was a big one for him. Now here he gets a little offline. I believe he was going for a triple tail up because he was doing those in practice, but still recovering nicely with a double tail up, which is not a small trick. Now this is the biggest trick we've seen off the cannon so far today. Those aren't easy to do on a cannon feature with a flat takeoff. You gotta pop extra hard and just whirlwind that thing around with your arms. Now that's a good link. Balance, you got the opposite 360 up, the regular truck driver down getting the variation, but here's where things went wrong. So he's upside down, he throws the bars, looks like he catches those all right. Oh, his foot oh. just slipped off before he was able to kick the tail up there. Without the kick, the bike's not gonna come around, he had to hit the eject button. Let's take a look at when the body impacted here, if he was able to roll it all. That left shoulder takes a lot of the impact. I'm trying to think if that's the one that he broke 20 minutes before Joyride started. It was such a shame to see him go down. He's been working so incredibly hard. He has a web series out right now. Go follow him on social media. Check out all the work he did to rehab that shoulder injury. We're hoping that's not injured again there for Max Fredrickson. 
This kid's an insanely hard worker. We just hope that he's all right. Such a tough go. He trains harder than anybody, like we were saying, not just on the bike, but in the gym. And he's worked through so many injuries. You don't want to see this spiral, just repetitive injury after injury. So now I was saying that I saw him do a triple tail up in practice. And I talked to him about that because I'd never seen him do one. I said, is that a new thing for you? He said, kind of. I said, have you done it in a contest? He said, no. And I said, have you done a lot of them? He said, yeah, a little bit, maybe 50. That just goes to show a little bit for him is 50. For most people, it would be, yeah, I've done a couple of them. Repetition is how he trains. These guys have to do things that many times these days to be so dialed. Well, Max Fredrickson being tended to by our medical professionals. Let's take a look at our leaderboard as it stands right now. Top three, Simon Pagez, Eric Fedko, Anthony Missouri still on top, 77.5. We have yet to break into the 80s. We have a lot more riders for you. Stick around. back here in Rotorua. Unfortunate crash there for Max Fredrickson. He's slinged up. He's going to go get that checked out. Just so tough to see. But there he's got his close friend Martin Soderstrom by his side. All of our thoughts go out to Max. I'm sure he's going to have to spend some more time rehabbing. He knows how to do it. I guess the one positive way of looking at it. He's professional at coming back so strong from those injuries. But now it's time. We send things back to the top of the course. Take a look at our next rider. This guy out of Italy, Torquato Testa. 50% of our Italian contingent out here in our top 14 of the world today. Not a country that's known for producing talent, but these two have been so strong the last few years, haven't they? Backflip, no foot can on that step down there. That's kind of a unique trick to just Torquato there. See what he's got on this big step up. Backflip. We saw him double flip that last year, so I'd imagine that's what he's looking oh! for. Cork 720 on that hip. Oh, does he, he have enough speed for the cannon? He's able to maintain with the tail up on the cannon. How in the world did he squeeze that out? No trick on the drop there. Well, he needs to finish strong here. Just a backflip. So Torquato Testa starting out really strong now. You know, one thing that stands out for me about that run that I can say he did a great job of continuing on. Sometimes riders will make a mistake and just stop and put all the pressure on run number two, but points are so important here and other riders are likely to have problems too, but I love the way he started off. Yeah, that backflip no foot can there was pretty cool and that's gonna score him high. And I landed a little crooked on that and I'd imagine he was going for a double flip on that big step over there, but he didn't quite have the speed. Now that was an overspin on a cork 720. Now, the fact that he did that cork 720 after bobbling on the jump before it was impressive. He bobbled on the 720 and still tail with the cannon. So right here, he's thinking, 
Just maintain some points, get down to the bottom and re-rack for run two. Now big ups to Torquato Testa for not throwing in the towel after the first mistake right there. We're waiting for his score. He'll of course be looking to better this on the next run. He gets a 42.5, good enough for sixth place right now. So we'll be looking for Torquato to make his way back up to the top of the course. He obviously has more in the tank. He did real well here last year, so we know he's got more in him. Can it be a break before I drop? Look who's in the start gate now, Cam. Look who we have. Thomas Janon, the rider we spoke of earlier, saying he was the last European to win a crankwork stop. He had this to say earlier. Oh yeah, last year, I mean, looking back at last year, I shouldn't have competed in uh, the first few events that I did, but like, it was too early for me for some reason. And uh, yeah, maybe because now looking back at it, I feel so much stronger because I know how much I rode and I know how good practice I got before compared to like last year, I was like almost no riding. Well, Thomas Chanon ah. missed this event last year. He was still recovering from an ankle injury from training in off season. He's in the form of his life right now, Tyler. That was an opposite 360 one footed can there. So not only was it opposite, he was able to do a double combo. Tail up on that long and low. It's actually a bit of a step down oh. feature. Front flip, tuck no hander, clap in the hands. 360 tail up on that hip there. I'm gonna get a couple pedals in. Opposite 360 tuck no hander. Double tail hip onto the box. Oh. 360 off. Nice stylish 360 on that long low. What's he got for the last jump? There we go! Finishing strong! Thomas Janon, the king of consistency, putting the nail in the coffin of that run, the 360 bar spin to tail whip. I saw him doing 360 bar spins on that in practice, so I was wondering if he was gonna squeak in a tail whip. And sure enough, he did. I don't know if he did that in practice, but that sure worked out real good if that was his first try on that. He always delivers. He's like Old Faithful, this guy. Comes back from an injury last year, has a tough go in the first couple of events, but he's in the form of his life. He's got his new training facility in his own backyard. Now he's bringing tricks that we've seen from other riders, but we haven't seen from him. So he has such a deep bag, so much to choose from, and he puts so much style on all these moves. I think that double tail up onto the cabin there was my favorite. Now it's a bit of a risky move, because if you slip a pedal, there's not much room to stop. Here's a look at that last trick, Ty. Walk us through it. So he's spinning around 360, spinning the bars and spinning the bike. So that's a triple combo there. So this is similar to the variation that Max Fredrickson was trying when he crashed. Max Fredrickson was going for a backflip bar spin to tail up. Thomas Chanon, the 360 bar spin to tail up. There's a lot going on there when you're doing three things at once. Tommy loves those triple combos. He's able to squeak a lot of tricks in. Tommy G very happy with that run. We're about to find out if the judges liked it. Sporting his new grill there. A big smile on his face. The judges deliberating, putting pens to paper. And we're gonna wait until we see that graphic at the right side of your screen. Will his score climb to the top or will it settle somewhere in the middle? I gotta think this is gonna be a big one. I would imagine. Here we go, he's past Missouri, 81.75. Thomas Janon moves into the lead. That's our first score that we've seen in the 80s. Well, things are really heating up now. Thomas Janon moving into the lead. Our next rider at the top. The second half of our Italian contingent with a fifth in Joyride last year, the biggest result of his career. He did the front flip bar spin off the cannon. That was a first for slope style mountain biking. He was a privateer. He's picked up a little bit more support this year, but could always use more. Talking about Diego Caverzasi. Can I want? See you, other boy. And here he comes. Backflip table on the step down. Looking nice and chill yeah. and relaxed for that big front flip. Now that thing's a hip. It's hard to tell. It's a step down hip, and he front flipped it. Wow, a cash roll also on a hip. The jumps he's doing these tricks on just as impressive as the tricks themselves. Truck driver onto the cabin, flat flip down. 
Front flip tuck no hander. He was not holding back. Front flip Superman from wow. Diego covers Zotzi. Yeah. A run packed with not only big tricks, but unique tricks. He is so pumped. And those, uh, those features that he was doing some of those tricks on, they're hard to trick. So the judges are going to take note of that. They know what what it takes to trick stuff like that. It's one thing to have some of those tricks in your run. It's another thing to link them. And it's a whole other thing to do them on the difficult features. This one, case in point. Front flip there. That is not a trick jump. I would love to see a different angle of that. The takeoff is actually angled. The landing it's also angled. the takeoff, too. Yeah, it's actually a step down. So here we go. He was already so strong by the time he got to the on-off box. Casual flat flip off there without the aid of a lip to give him the initiation of that rotation. Front flip, no hander on the long and low, and then this. This one must have gotten you excited, Cam. I remember you doing this trick back in the day. This I don't is think we've seen him do that in a comp yet. One of my favorite tricks in the entire world of mountain biking right here. So difficult. He ejects off the bike using that rear brake to initiate the rotation. Completely separates from the bicycle. His head touches the tire, flings the bike back under his feet. Feet connect to the pedals and his competitors all amazed. Bit of a scary moment there. He almost came up short. And when he landed, you could tell he was a little shocked. And then it went into relief and excitement. Great to see Diego Caverzasi wearing a jersey with logos. That means he's finally getting some, port, some support now. He can always use more. The judges, I'm sure, are going to support this run. Hopefully assign a gigantic number to it. Diego has done his job. I Time for the judges to do theirs. You can see that run definitely being in contention. Diego awaits, the crowd awaits. The judges making sure they take all the time necessary to make the right call. There's no taking it back. Now they're thinking about the features that he did some of those tricks on. You see head judge Paul Rack back there overseeing. And here we go. Our score is in Diego Caverzasi. Good enough for fourth place, a 71.75. He nods his head. Now, I was expecting that to be a little bit higher. It was a great run, but that's what's so crazy about Slopestyle is you think back to the run that he's trying to beat and how great that run was, too. Now, here's one of our most well-rounded riders in the field, a guy who doesn't just compete in Slopestyle out here, even though it's his main focus. He was in the pump track earlier on in the week. So Thomas Janon here deciding that even though the slope style competition practice schedule is so straining, he knows he's one of the best in the world at pump track racing. So he decided to sign up. He's won it before, he won it again, got some valuable points for the overall king of crankworks. That was the Mons Royale pump track presented by Torpedo 7. He won that, he's looking for another gold medal here today in the slope style. This is his main event. This is what he spends all year training for, the French rider, Thomas Lemoyne. Now check out how smooth he is in between features. It's one of my favorite things about watching him ride. Double truck driver, we rarely see him take pedals in between features, just always maintaining speed. And that's why he's so good at pump track. Backflip, tuck no hander to bar spin. 360 inward table to bar spin, another triple combo. 360 tail up on the cannon, big move there. <laughs> Front flip on, 360 down. Still hasn't taken a single pedal. This is a huge run. Back flip, tail up on the last down, putting it down perfect to tires. Look at that run. His feet found the pedals. He was a little bit sideways, but they stayed on those pedals. His head did not move when he landed. Now that run in comparison to the last one that we saw, he may not have had as big of tricks, but everything looked effortless. And that's what the judges are looking for. They want things to look easy. The judges have a lot of different categories on their scorecard. One of them is execution. Now this rider embodies that criteria. His precision, you noted how he didn't take a single pedal the whole run down. down. That means he's so efficient on his bicycle. And look, no slip pedals either. Risky move there with a the front flip onto the cabin. So great variety in his tricks. He had a lot of 360 variations. He had the front flips, the back flips. Now finishing with that back flip tail up, I was so impressed by the fact that he looked to be a little bit slanted, but when his feet found those pedals, everything sucked straight and watch his head upon landing. So smooth. 
He's got such long legs and he's able to find his way around. Here's where he counter steers, slows it down. He knows he's a little over. Look at that, keeps his upper body square and then the bike follows. And that was a solid run. He's got more in the tank. We've seen some bigger tricks out of him on that last jump. But he's seen other riders go down, screw up their run, so he just wants to get one solid one in the bag. Now with a good placing here, he's gonna be looking pretty nice in the King of Crankworks overall. We're gonna find out what his score is right now, where he stacks up against the riders. The score is in, it's climbing. Second place for Thomas Lemoyne, 78.5, just outside the 80s. Very respectable, and I'm sure he's got more in the tank for run number two. That was a good run for him. He's gonna be stoked on that. Well, this next rider is a household name for anybody who loves bicycles that fly through the air. He's a legend in the world of BMX. When all of his fellow competitors from BMX have long since retired, not only is he still doing it, but he's now crossed over into mountain bike slope style. I'm talking about Ryan Nyquist. So now he has a new sport here. Yes, he rides BMX bikes, he rides mountain bikes. You would think they're the same. Here we see him in an indoor park on 20 inch wheels. Now when he moved over to the mountain bike, it was a lot more rotational weight with those big 26 inch wheels. He had to change his setup to make it feel comfortable and at home and feel like he's on his 20 inch. The tires that he runs are insanely light. They're called Maxxis Max Light. They're 285 grams. Most tires we see are in the 400 gram range. So many riders in the history of this sport from BMX have tried to cross over and attempt slope style and it's never worked as successfully as with this man. He's such a veteran taking all of his mental strength into this sport. Runs now, a real unique bike setup. Oh! Double truck driver on the step down, landing a little sideways, not having to take a pedal though. Backflip, one-handed X, able to recover. So now he's reset. Flips, suicide, no-hander to bar spin. 360 suicide, no-hander, running a front brake on his bike. You actually have to stop the wheel to do a no-hander during flips and 360s. Oh, just hanging on! 360 off the cabin. 360, one-handed X out. What's he got for the last jump? Ryan Nyquist, 720 to finish things off. No, he goes down. Oh, just coming up a little bit short there. Now this is reminiscent of last year. The whispers of runs past echoing through the woods here. Ryan Nyquist in 2017 had a blistering run, crashed on the last jump, but he got back up to the top and he stomped it. All we can hope is that we'll see that again here today. Again, man. He was doing that 720 in practice just fine, but something must have happened. Maybe he got a little offline, sunk into the soft stuff. I can't believe that his tire held on that side was of a landing. Such a light tire, but I guess it's working. The way that he was able to recover from that and shake it off, that's just years and years of experience. This guy just never gives up, too. It's so hard to transition into this sport. So many BMX riders, as soon as they realize that it's not a walk in the park, they give up, but this guy just keeps pushing. He had a podium last year in Joyride. Now he's on the entire Crankworks World Tour, solidifying his status as not only one of the best BMX riders in the world, but one of the best slopestyle mountain bike riders in the world, too. Seven twenty. They're just coming up a little bit short. We saw him seven twenty oh. bar spin that last year. Well, just a matter of a little bit more speed needed for that right there. We know this score isn't going to take him into the lead, but we want to hear what he's thinking after that run. Michaela, what's he got for you? All right, thanks, Cam. You looked super, super solid. That 720 at the end just seemed to get you. Is there a difference? You know, how does the bike feel compared to a BMX throwing a trick like that? Um, yeah, BMX is kind of just snappier. You can kind of maneuver it better. But um, on these jumps, BMX would feel really crazy. So, like, bigger bike, bigger wheels, definitely hold the speed better and uh, a little more secure. But it's, I mean, I'm not going to lie, it's scary out there, you know? So uh, anytime someone comes and makes it down all the way to the bottom on full ride, like, we're all cheering. They're stoked. It's just, like, perfect end of the weekend. Perfect. Well, best of luck on round two. Hey, thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, well, that comes from us, too. Best of luck to Ryan Nyquist. We want to see him do exactly what he did last year, is get up there for run number two, stomp it. I believe he was fourth place here last year. But right now, this guy got his first podium last year, a third in Leger. 
This rider has so many tricks in his bag. We're always scratching our heads, wondering if he's going to have more BMX tricks, moto tricks. This is an exciting moment. Backflip oh. tail up on the step down there. Same thing we saw Anthony do, landing perfectly smooth, not having to take any pedals. 360 cable on that shark fin feature there. Backflip yes. Superman C grab. That's what I'm talking about. Superman on the hip there. Now that's kind of an old school trick, but I like the way he does those. It's great Double for tail the up on the cannon, slipping a pedal. Truck driver on, flat flip down. There's no takeoff on that drop, so pulling back and doing a complete backflip is not easy. Court 720, no hander. Oh, just under rotating. People seem to be having trouble with that last jump today. That run had such great variety in it. If he were to land that last trick, that Cork 720 no-hander, that's a trick that is an established banger on the tour, a trick that you've seen some riders do, but he did some tricks here that he's the only guy you're gonna see out here doing today. I like his trick choice. I like how he's not afraid to throw old school tricks like a Superman in there. It's not a body rotation. It's not a bike rotation, it's not a bar spin rotation, it's just a good old classic Superman. Well, he had three different Superman variations as well. That backflip Superman seat grab, the Superman seat grab on the hip, which is hard, and then the Superman on the long and low. Yeah, I didn't see that that was a Superman seat grab on the hip, so that was not a repeat trick with this one here, which is straight Superman. Now, borrowing from so many different two-wheel disciplines, this would have been the cap to it all. He was committed to that too. Watch his hand go full extension. Didn't realize he was coming up short until he was already too short. That's what we love about the forgiving dirt out here. If you crash in the right way, you slide. The dirt gives way a little bit. Great to see Simon Godziak fist pumping to the crowd. He'll be all right for run number two, but what will his score be? Obviously not a big one because he crashed. It's a 49, good enough for eighth place. A little bit of blood on the glove, never hurt anybody. Looking forward to run number two for Simon Godziak. Oh man. Oh man is right. Look who we have in the gate next. He needs no introduction, but let's give him one anyways. A first in Leger, a second in Innsbruck, a battle between him and Nikolai Rugakin, one of the best the sport's ever seen. Battling back from injury, both last season and this off season. He's looking in the form of his life right now, looking like the strongest rider in practice, wouldn't you say, Tyler? Yeah, he's been so anxious to get this contest started. Court 720 on the step down. Stomps it. Backflip tail whip on the shark fin. That is not an easy jump to trick. Backflip bar spin to opposite tail whip. So, so he's already that. balancing things out here. Opposite tail whip on the hip. Triple what? truck driver on the cannon. Opposite 360 bar spin to bar spin back. Court backflip, one foot of can on the drop. Front flip on the long and low. Let's see what he's got for the last jump. Oh, Quark 720 Quark bar spin, and he stops it! Wow! Everything looks so easy when he does it. Brett Reeder! Look at that, a little bit of finish corral celebration still on his bike. Brett Reeder, he's been looking so strong in practice, carrying all that momentum right into today when it counts the most. Yesterday, his first practice run, Quark 720 bar spun that last jump, which just doesn't make any sense at all. So the Quark 720 on the start step down, so heavy. This right here, backflip tail up on a step down hip. Look how low he was. There's a backflip bar spin to opposite tail up. So that tail up is in a different direction than the one he did before. Now this, the opposite tail up, that's what got him at Joyride. And we saw him actually opposite double tail uping that in practice. So hard to believe he does have more in the tank. But that was a pretty jam-packed run. Look at the extension on this flat drop flip, one foot a can. Wow, that was picture perfect. So sideways too, adding his own flair to that move, but landing incredibly straight. Front flip on the long and low, he popped that so high. And now this needed to be stomped for any of that to count. So a cork 720, he has to get his knees out of the way throw the bar spin, get his hands on, pull the rest of the spin around. So that's a 720 rotation with a bar spin. Well, there he is, Brett Reeder. The score to beat, 81.75, currently held by Thomas Janon. What's it gonna be for Brett Reeder? Where will this thing climb to? Brett Reeder wow. goes into the lead, a 94.25. A ridiculously high score. Let's send it down to Michaela Gatto.
Oh my gosh, that was beautiful to watch. You absolutely nailed that run. How long have you been thinking about that run for and how good does it feel to be on top? Uh, well, I guess I've been thinking about that run for like two months and four days of practice. So uh, yeah, it feels good to, to put it down and be in the finish corral and yeah, no crashes, uh, good riding. Stoked to watch the next rider. Absolutely amazing. You were one of the guys yesterday that I, from my view, you didn't seem that phased by the weather. You still looked super, super solid. So it's obvious you've been thinking about this for a while. Eat, sleep, breathe <laughs> this run, right? For sure, yeah. Well, we look forward to your next run. Congratulations, current leader. One of those tricks could have been considered one of the best we've seen so far in the entire event, and he linked them all together. Well, let's take a look at our current leaderboard, of course. Brett Reeder standing on top at the moment. The podium, last step right now, belongs to Thomas Lemoyne. Second place goes to Thomas Chanon. Right now, if things were to end, we would still have no repeat winner. We would still have nobody other than North American winners right now. We've got one rider left to go. You know who he is. Brett has a 13 point lead right now, which is pretty insane. If anybody can take him down. So in Innsbruck, we had that face off between Brett Reeder and Nikolai Rogakin. We were hoping that we would see that face off again here. It's been so long since we've seen them both in a competition together. This guy thrives on pressure. We had a chance to catch up with Nikolai earlier, and here's what he had to say. Oh, New Zealand is an incredible spot, especially here in Rotorua. I mean, there's just so much possibility here for adventurous stuff. I mean, the forest, the hills, uh, and the people, you know, the vibe here, you just instantly can tell that everybody is down for uh, adventure and to have fun and just a uh, good vibe. Yeah, one of the best courses. I think all the boys can agree that it's, uh, it's just incredible, especially the dirt on it and uh, the features are it's, it's just too much fun. Us as slope style riders, over the last few years, the luge is definitely our favorite thing because, you know, we can go fast, we can mess with each other, and uh, it's, it's fun for all the riders. And, you know, we, we get as many laps in as we can every time here in Rotorua, and, uh, you know, we're stoked that Skyland lets us do that. All of us riders are just uh, thinking about biking all the time and especially in the off season you know you're obviously thinking of tricks that you want to do and when you got time you, you try to learn them and, and try to get them done and try to you know keep them secret from the public you know, keep them secret for the boys because uh, that just creates so much more of an excitement value when you're bringing something new especially when it's unexpected so uh, first few rides on it today and I think it's going to uh, be a good show. Gakin, one of those riders who squeezes every ounce of fun out of all the trips he has on the tour. You see him there on the luge at Skyline. He's one rider who has a special relationship with the crowd here in Rotorua, always running the Magaza logo on the back of his jersey. Of course, last year's winner, the crowd always goes nuts for him. And here he is dropping in, Tyler. Backflip bar spin on the step down. See what he's got on the second feature here. A double tail. He did that in practice, and all he said was that did not feel Whoa. comfortable. Wow, a twister. We haven't seen him do it on that jump yet. Front flip, tuck no hander. 360 tail up on the cannon. Almost under rotating. So far, everything's looking pretty perfect here. Tail up on the drop. We don't see those too often these days, and that's a steep landing. Front flip no hander, taking the time to clap the hands. Oh, what? Wow, a cash roll seat grab. <laughs> That was the most stylish casual I've ever seen. <laughs> oh, man. Always with the best celebrations after the, his runs. The only thing better than his runs are his celebrations. Now, Nikolai, a guy who's known for bringing surprises to Rotorua specifically, we were expecting something that we've seen before in the last jump, maybe a cash roll tail up, but a rider who's not known for the stylish variations, reaching behind him, it almost looked like a snowboard variation, grabbing the seat. Backflip, bar spin on the step down there. This right here, double tail, that's a scary one. It's a step down and he wants to set up for this twister. 1080 on the big step up there. He's the only guy, I believe, that we're gonna see do that today. 
Now he almost under-rotated on this, didn't he? Take a look. Now he had to overspin on that, because that's a left hip, and he's spinning to the left, so he had to do about a 400-degree rotation instead of a 360. Tail up on the drop. That landing's super steep, so that's a scary one. And now we're all sitting here wondering, what in the world did he save? He has so many tricks to do on oh. last one. Look at him look back into that, too. Now this is like a really stylish grab. Get this guy some crab grab gloves. That looks like a snowboard move. He reaches behind his back, grabs the backside of his seat underhand with his right hand. I think that's my new favorite trick of his. <laughs> and this is a new celebration <laughs> dance for 2018. I wonder if he practices those at home. He's done warming up the shoulder, it looks like. <laughs> Oh, and just jubilation from Nikolai Ragakin as that run comes together exactly as planned. What do the judges think about that run? I know we love it. I know the crowd loves it. But will it be enough to surpass the 94 Brett Reeder? Here come the scores. Here we go. It's still climbing. Good enough for second place as the crowd takes a gasp. An 86.75. For Nikolai Ragakin, he says, I'll take it. But you know, just as he was in Innsbruck, he's excited to get back up to the top and square up face to face against Brett Reeder. Jeez, what a round one to kick off this 2018 season. Brett take a still look got at our some leaderboard. breathing room there. But Nikolai always has more in the tank. Tyler, how about Eric Fedko in sixth? That's the kid I was talking about for the fantasy crankworks. Good pick there if you decided to save some money and go with Eric Fedko. Now a lot of riders with a lot of work to do in run number two. Iron out those mistakes and we'll see that man right there staring straight at Nikolai Ragakin. We got run number two coming up right after this.
Um, Martin and Ty both did best whip, so this is the way to do it. There we are, look at the crowd just buzzing off those run one scores that we just saw and so excited that we have all the riders at the top to do it all over again. Now they're here, they're seeing it with their own eyes, but for those of us, maybe we have some friends who aren't lucky enough to be here or aren't smart enough to tune into the webcast. Tyler, walk us through what they should do. So this liking what you're seeing out here, go check out the Red Bull TV Analyzer. It gives you a choice to see what you want, when you want, and you can pick the riders you want. Check it out in full speed, rewind, fast forward, watch it in slow-mo. Nikolai Rogakin here with a twister. You like it, you think your friends would like it, share it on your Facebook, throw it up there, let the whole world check it out. Well, that's how you do it. We don't want anybody to be left out here. We want everybody to enjoy how ridiculous this event has been so far. And we're only at the halfway point. Martin, let's start with you. You said when you got up here that you've never seen Nikolai do that trick before. And I mean, you pay attention to everything. What would you call that casserole with the grab? Yeah, we just talked about it. We don't even know what to call it. That's how crazy Nikolai is going with like his riding at the moment. And what I really like about it is that it's so different. I mean, every other rider maybe throws in another bar spin or another tail whip, but Nikolai is really like creating his completely own riding style. And uh, yeah, it's just really exciting to watch. And Lucas Knopf here, he's like Martin said, Nikolai is always the guy who's gonna add in a bar spin or an extra rotation. You said that's what some people do, but Nikolai is the guy who leads that charge. Was it surprising for you to see him do a trick that's more on the style front? Uh, for sure, because we obviously saw Nikolai add some bar spins here and there or the casual tail whip last year, so it's definitely a new point. I actually expected the judges to judge him a bit higher for that, but uh, we will see if we have some something more on the next run. Yeah, for sure. And Ty, on that point, anybody else out there you think maybe deserved a little bit higher score? I thought Diego's run had pretty much everything it needed. His score seemed a little bit low to me. Yeah, we were both surprised on that. Man. What do you think we can expect? We've got a repeat of this face-off between Brett Reeder and Nikolai Rogakin. You guys remember that event in Innsbruck. Do you think things are shaping up to see a repeat of that, a sequel? I think Nikolai wants this pretty bad. I mean, I have never seen him go to an event and be happy with second. So uh, he's going to do everything he can. And well, uh, yeah, and then we have all the, all the other riders that have been riding really well today as well. I mean, Simon is definitely not going to be happy with a uh, like, throwaway run like that. That was sort of like with a crash. So um, we have a lot to expect for the second run. We can say all we want about scores from run one and what we hope to see the judges do differently in run number two. But at the end of the day, they're the only ones whose opinions matter. And Michaela Gatto is actually standing by with the judges. We're going to be able to pick their brain a little bit and see what their rationale was. That's right, I'm here in the judges booth. I think everyone has this question. Nick, um, Nikolai Rogakin, 86.75. Brett Reeder, 94.25. Nikolai with a unique new trick. Brett Reeder looking really solid. Just wondering, why do you score them like that? Well, we score them to a certain criteria and I would say like, uh, Brett Reeder's one was perfect execution. That's one of our top criteria. Nikolai's was really progressive, great to watch. Just a tad, not enough you could say, but there's always second runs, you never know. And what do you do when someone pulls a move that nobody has ever seen before? Well, we take it in consideration. It's a variety of a move we've seen before. He just added something a little extra, and we just take that in consideration, and we uh, add it up. So a little extra points for a little extra variation on a trick that already exists. Absolutely, yeah. All right, I think, I think we got our answer. I Thank, hope so. Thanks so much, Paul. You guys welcome. <laughs> well, there we go. A little look inside the judges' rationale. Now, Lucas Knopf, for everybody out there, he's a rider who's on the world tour, just slightly not on the top 14 for this yeah. event, but you were here as an alternate. Are you surprised at the level of what we're seeing right here in run one already? I'm really surprised with it, to be honest. Um, kind of not. But some guys really stepped it up. I saw a lot in practice, but 
a lot of those guys didn't even do the tricks in practice. I saw Ridot do the cork seven bar like 10 times a day, so I knew he's gonna do it. I saw Diego doing the front flip Superman once. I was uh, surprised he got scored like that. I thought it should be a bit higher as well. But some guys just went full throttle into their run, like Nicoli, obviously. And yeah, I'm stoked to see some more action. So Lucas, you're a slope style athlete yourself. Like Cam said, you're trying to get your way onto this tour. You got to ride this course. Tell us how hard it is to trick that second feature. It's not a trick jump. Yeah, it's really the long and low shark fin is really like a speed jump. Mm -hmm. So I no handed it and I tail whipped it. But it was really hard to judge speed because if you pull a hard trick, you're obviously going further into the jump right. and then it's hard to get the right speed for the big trick step up. Mm -hmm. So re you really have to land perfect, smoothly. Eric Fetko said to me he even takes a little break before so he doesn't okay. overshoot the jump. Yeah. So you really have to have that in consideration for your whole run. Well, it's great insight to hear from a rider who was just one step off yeah, of being a part of the competition here today. Now, you guys, both competitors out here, Martin and you, Tyler, you guys both did dual speed and style. Martin, you won dual speed and style. You guys both rode whip-off. Tyler, you got third in the whip-off. That's got to be one of your favorite events. Check this out. Always my favorite. So this is a jam session, right, Ty? It's got to be tiring. You guys are up there. It's just one jump, a ton of riders, and the best whip takes it. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. It was right after speed and style, so it was a long day. And they only give us about an hour and a half, maybe two hours. So our first hits, we get to feel the speed out, and then we have to start cranking the whips. I actually just went down to the SRAM booth, grabbed my butt. Can I? <laughs> Can I talk? Yeah, perfect. <laughs> Right off to the best whip uh, or the uh, speed and style event, and just run up the hill to be part of the the best whip. That's, that's always that's how fun it is. Everybody loves it. It's just a big jam session. We call it the official Oceana Whip Off Championship, presented by Spank, and it's a crowd favorite. We do it under the lights, and if you've never been here in Rotorua, that's one thing you got to come and check out. And if you're good on a big bike, come ride it too. It's not that hard. Just roll up to the top of the course, drop in. Just good times. Just good times is right. Well, a whole lot more good times to come here. Here's our official leaderboard after run number one. Diego Caverzasi in seventh. Eric Fedko, the new gun in sixth place. And up there, our top three. Thomas Janan on the podium right now. Currently, Nikolai Ragakin and Brett Reeder leading out the charge. The top two, that's what we could have expected to see. But what will run two have in store? This is the Crankworx Rotorua Slope Style in memory of Magaza. Run two, coming up after this. extensive worldwide testing, the following are scientifically recognized methods of showing support for your favorite rider. Air horn, Vuvuzela, novelty homemade signage, Instagram hashtag, cowbell thunder stick, screaming. However, studies have shown that fan nakedness has a detrimental effect on athlete performance. And that's why you need this. But you can't get it here. It's only available on site at the best mountain bike destinations on planet Earth.
nakedness. Nobody wants fan nakedness, and if you gotta wear clothes, you might as well wear the best clothes out there. Brought to you by Fox, all the Crankworks merch. Get your hands on it. And if you're not here right now, you're watching from the comfort of your couch, make it out here next year so you can bring home some Fox souvenirs from the Crankworks World Tour. Here's a look at our start list for run number two. We're gonna start off with Logan Pete. A little bit of trouble in the first run, washing out on that backflip tail. Ryan Nyke was crashing on that 720 on the last jump. Torquato Testa making it to the bottom, but a lot of work to do in order to try to get another podium position out here. Now, of course, we're gonna finish things off. Reverse order means Nikolai Regakin will be the second to drop. Brett Reeder will be able to answer whatever Nikolai drops. Well, this is the Crankworks Rotorua slope style in memory of Magaza. Run two starts right now. There's a special energy in the air here in Rotorua. The crowd is going wild out there. Nobody has any room for air here. Into the final feature, going for the twister. Can he land it? Land it, land it. And he got it! Bumps, thinking about what we might be able to see here in run number two. The stage is set for another battle royale here between Nikolai Regakin and Brett Reeder and all of our riders in our elite field of 14, the 14 best slope style mountain bike athletes on the face of the planet. We're gonna have Logan Pete dropping first. Like you said, it's reverse order. So Reeder's gonna be dropping last, Nikolai second to last. Right now, Logan's sitting in that last position because he crashed on that big step up. And I want to see this guy get a run. He deserves it. He's been working hard all winter, spending his winter in Santa Cruz so he can ride, stay out of the snow in Canada. Been riding every day with Brandon Semenuk, Owen Marks. Now, riding every day is something that a lot of people say, but this guy truly does it, doesn't he? Yeah, his shirt says it all, ride or die. Ride or die. Logan Pete from British Columbia. Of course, training partner of the man, Brandon Semnuk, guy who's won this event, he's won everything. So if you're gonna have a training buddy, you might as well have the best in the world. But Logan Pete, a little bit of trouble in run number one. It was the third feature on the course, that step up, a backflip tail up, slight over rotation, sliding out on the landing. Luckily made it out unscathed, but he knows exactly what he needs to do now to improve on his score. He has a lot of potential to put, a good, put down a good run here. Yep. Here he goes into the start step down. Opposite 360X up, spinning his unnatural direction. Big backflip on that shark fin. He looks composed, lazy style. Now that's what took him out last run, landed perfect. Opposite 360 on that hip there. Let's see what he's got on the cannon. Oh, a 720. 720 gets it! That's a big move for Logan right there. I flew over with him on the plane, and he was saying he hopes that he could do it on that. Logan Pete is the only guy in the world who's done that in a slope style competition. What's he got for the last jump? Another 720, perfect for tires. That is exactly what Logan Pete needed to do. Known as such a consistent threat on the tour. That gave me goosebumps. I'm excited for this kid. He was pretty nervous flying over here. It's just been so long since Joyride. He's been working really, really hard. Ah. So an opposite 360 on the step down there. I like how high he went on that shark fin feature there. Now this is where he screwed up in his first run. You can see he tried to get himself to just calm down and not pull for the flip. Such a blind trick, and sometimes you want to pull and look for the landing, and that throws you off. That right there, 720, that's the biggest trick we've seen on that. Now, when you're the only guy who's ever done that in slope style competition, that trick being the 720 off the cannon log, that has to weigh really heavy on the judge's scorecard, doesn't it? Right, and it's not going to be a repeat trick, even though he did one right here on this feature. That cannon has a flat takeoff, so it's so hard to get the momentum to spin around twice. 
And the style he has on his 720s, I love it. It's unique. It's not like everybody else upside down with the Cork 7s. He goes on that flat spin rotation, landing so incredibly straight. The fact that he can adapt that to a cannon is very impressive. So happy to see him get a run. And he's had some sponsor changes right now. He currently doesn't have a frame sponsor. Look at this camaraderie here. Out there. He's a good guy to pick up. Always consistent. Logan Pete stomping his run. We got to get this guy a frame sponsor. Truly one of the best in the world. Embodying the ride or die lifestyle. Putting down a run here. The first stop of the 2018 slope style season. All these valuable points. You need to stomp at least one of your two runs to stay on this elite tour. What's the score going to be? A 74, good enough for sixth place. Now those sixth place points are going to be very valuable. Hopefully he can hold on to somewhere in that, in that ranking. That should help him get the invite to the next one. It's great to see how psyched Nikolai was for him to stomp that run. Everyone's friends out here and everyone wants to see everyone else get down safely. Now remember, Ryan Nyquist crashed the 720 in his first run. That's exactly what happened to him in his first run last year. But being such a pro, such a veteran, this guy's the oldest guy in the field by a lot. He could be a lot of these guys' father. He has what it takes to be mentally strong, get up there and do it again. What's he got to focus on here, Ty? He's just got to get the speed for that last jump. We saw him 720 bar spin that last year. So now not only does he have to land the 720, I'd imagine he wants to throw the bar spin in there. Well, that's how it was from last year. He said, well, I know the 720 bar spin is what I need to get a good score. He ended up in fourth place last year. And so he just winged it without even landing a 720 in the first run. History has a tendency to repeat itself. What's the story going to be here in 2018 for Ryan Nyquist? Curious to see if he's going to change up any of his run before that last jump or stick with it and just try to stomp it. Double truck this driver time. on the step down. Now he doesn't catch the bars in between, he just chucks them. Backflip one-handed X up. I believe that was a backflip double bar spin, a little hard to tell from our angle. It looks like he's got the cobwebs worked out here in run number two, he's smoother. Truck driver on the cannon. Backflip bar spin on. 360 down. Everything's going well so far. 360 one handed X up. So much get the speed. Get those in. 720 yeah. sticking it perfect. <laughs> Ryan Nyquist staring at the crowd after landing Woo! the 720 that he crashed in run number one. Old faithful Ryan Nyquist. Now, I was a little worried he wasn't going to have the speed right, for that, but cool. he managed to push through. That, that was cool. Right, That's what that it was says. cool. <laughs> This guy's always so happy. Uh, Father no, of three. I thought I, <laughs> I thought I was dead again. <laughs> he got his first crank work slow style podium last year with a third at Joyride. His first time standing on the podium. Unbelievable, he's even on this tour. Nonetheless, being one of the best here, always a podium threat. Let's take a look back at this run. That double truck driver off the start step down there, you'll, you'll notice how he doesn't catch the bars in between, and that takes a lot of commitment. Oh. So that was a flip suicide no-hander to bar spin. You have to hit front brake to do that trick, or else when you take your hands off, the bars just want to revert to backwards, and that's not what you want when you're upside down. Now he's the only guy even running a front brake out here, allowing him to do these tricks that nobody else is doing. He runs a real unique setup, super light bike. Look at him running death grip there, no hands on the brake. Now this wasn't a perfect landing, and so I was hoping he was gonna have the speed. He cranked into this jump. Picture he, perfect 720. He knew he needed just a little bit more speed. He was only about eight inches short on this 720 last run. So pumping the landing of the setup long and low before this, sprinting into the jump, and look at that. He had no room to spare, but the judges are gonna love the cleanliness of that run. Came up a little bit short, but it shouldn't hurt his score too much. His feet stayed on, he didn't <laughs> slide out. Look at Nikolai. The biggest fan out here has to be Nikolai Ragakin. All right, the score coming in. He needs to beat a 94.25 for the lead. What's it gonna be? A sixth it. place for Ryan Nyquist. He says he'll take it, getting those valuable points to stay on Woo! tour. Wow. Ryan Nyquist, he never ceases to amaze us. So we've already seen two people that screwed up their first runs actually landing a second run. Next in the gate, out of Italy, Torquato Testa. Now this kid is always impressive. He placed second 
here last year, a silver medal, his first time getting a podium. So Rotorua is a special place for him as well. Starting off with that same backflip, no foot of can on the step down. Big backflip, see if he's got the speed here for a oh, double, double backflip. We saw him do that last year. Now he's already improving on his first run score. No, he didn't get the 720 double there, but he gets we didn't the see that in his first run, so I'm doing it in practice. I'm glad he could pull it out in his run. Flat flip on that drop. Tuck no hand, what's he got for the last jump? Yes, the back flip, no foot again to tail whip. Now I believe that's the same trick he did on that jump last year and it caught him second place. He knows the judges like it. He knows the judges like that double backflip. And man, we saw Ryan Nyquist looking like he dusted off the cobwebs, even smoother in run number two. The same could be said for Torquato Testa. Just little shakiness in run number one, completely ironed out smooth here in his second attempt. He's pretty relieved to get that one down. Torquato Testa, Triplo Sete, Monza Pizza Bike Park. I know that he's got all of his friends back there in Monza, Italy, cheering for him in front of their TV screen. Double backflip mid run. If you follow this kid on Instagram, he has so many tricks. He's got this mulch jump that he just rides every single day and does everything multiple times. Double tail up on the cannon there. That'll score him really well. Flat flip there. No takeoff on that, so it's so hard to get the rotation. Now, here's his last trick backflip, no foot of can, oh. getting the kick. Now we saw Max miss the kick there, and we saw what happened to him. He unfortunately went down hard. Torquato, unable to get his feet on. They didn't touch the ground too bad, so that shouldn't hurt his score too now, much. That was just a standard backflip tail up, and he slipped the pedals. The judges were really harsh him for that, but he's the only guy doing that trick. The backflip, no footed can to tail whip. That should help his cause. It's such a difficult trick. If there's a trick that only one guy's doing, there's usually a reason. Yeah, we see guys do backflip no foot can sometimes. We see guys do backflip tail ups all the time, but combining them, it's kind of a Torquato special. We don't really see anybody else doing backflip no foot cans off of step downs. No, that is not something that sounds enjoyable to me. That sounds stressful. Well, the judges crunch the numbers. We're looking for a big score here for Torquato Testa to make Evo proud back in Monza, Italy. There were a few similarities to his run last year, and that got him second spot. And every year, the level gets increased. But today, after all the rain we had yesterday, some of these tricks are hard. That double flip can't be easy with the squishier conditions compared to last year. The score coming in for Torquato Testa, what will it be? He improves the 74.75, good enough for some valuable points in a seventh place so far. Well, there he is, Reed Boggs, coming off of that injury, that shoulder injury. This guy riding slightly pained right now, but still able to muster out some tricks at run number one. Now he knows what he needs to improve. Like we said in his last run, his, his goal here is to just maintain points and stay on tour. He's only been riding for a week after oh. surgery. That was pretty sick right there. So he's choosing tricks that he can do that don't involve his arms, like that 361 foot table. 360 on the cannon. This kid's so smooth. He did a bar spin. He did a bar spin in there. He said that those hurt his shoulder right now. Nice suicide no hander on the long and out. There we go. Another backflip, one foot in can to finish things off so for that, Reed Boggs. That was better than his first run. He's playing the tactical game right here of just getting points and trying to stay on tour. That's exactly what he was so successful with last season, getting in as an alternate. The morning after winning the whip contest here in Rotorua, got the word, got the email that he was into the competition. He wrote every single event. Some of these events, he was the alternate. Now he's on the tour and he's being smart right now with that injury, making sure he gets the points to stay there. All right, the score coming in for Reed Boggs. Will he improve on his run score? Nope, a 45.5. Not improving on that 47 he had before. Judges not liking those straight airs, but expect to see a more healed and ready Reed Boggs in Innsbruck. Good to see Reed out here. He's got a couple months to heal that up, get stronger, get his tricks back, and be ready for Innsbruck. Back up to the top from Poland, Simon Godziak. Now we saw a lot of really unique tricks out of him in run number one, didn't we? Yeah, we just got to see if he can stick that cork 720 no-hander on the last jump. 
And this guy is so unpredictable, we don't even know if he's going to continue down the same path as run number one. Backflip tail up on the step down, coming in pretty nose heavy, but landing nice and smooth. 360 on that shark fin, a little bit offline. Still Get gets it. The backflip Superman seat grab. Big Superman seat grab on that hip. Lots of freestyle moto influence. Truck driver on, flat flip off. He's looking real relaxed. Superman getting better extension than he did in the first run. Here it is. Oh, wow. and the front flip tail up under rotated. Oh, he decided to change his trick there. We saw him try that in Innsbruck last year. That would be a huge combo. That would have been a huge score. Simon Godzik always going for it. Let's take a look back at some of the replays. You said he landed a little bit nosy on this backflip tail of step down. Looked a little scary for him, but nice and smooth. Perfect for the judges. They like that. Yeah, yeah. Lots of commitment. Another front tire landing on that backflip Superman seat grab. How about the extension on the Superman variations? Oh, he's always got full extension. He didn't quite get it on this uh, long and low here in first run. Getting his legs nice and straight there. And I was curious to see him not pedaling in that last jump. I figured he wasn't going to do the same trick because he came up short on the Cork 720 no-hander. How about this? Front flip, tail up, getting it perfect. He just missed snap on the lip. So under rotates, luckily able to slide out of that nice and smooth. That was it. He just initiated the front flip. He needed a little bit more rotation. He got the tail up so early. If that front flip was coming around a little bit quicker, it would have been checkered flags for Simon Godziak. But right now, it's a 46.5, not bettering his score. Two crashes. So we'll send it back up to the top for our next rider. Well, take a look there, Tyler. It looks like out of France, Simon Pagez. Now, we're always wondering, after watching him in practice, what he's saving for the finals. Every rider has different strategy. This guy doesn't show too much in practice. He does straight flips, straight 360s, and then he squeaks in all the tail ups, the opposite tail ups, all that stuff in his run. A little bit of a heartbreaker of a run for him last year here. He was trying that 360 double tail up. Let's see if he can make it to the finish line jump now. Double truck, drive, truck driver on the start step down. Bar spin on the shark fin, setting up for something big here. Backflip double bar spin. Now there's the opposite double tail up for him. Such an awkward trick, landing it perfectly. Wow. 360 regular tail up. I like how he links those back to back so you can tell that one of them's opposite. Truck driver down, big combo for him on that. Tough no hander. Here he comes at the last jump. Backflip, opposite tail up again, landing perfectly smooth. There we go. That's exactly what we wanted to see out of Simon Pagez. Now smoother than his first run, wouldn't you say? Yeah, he cleaned it up a little bit. I really like his trick choice. He, he knows the judges like the opposite tail ups. And those are his strengths, so that's what he's working for. Look how much speed he had coming into this. I believe he had a backflip single bar spin in run number one. No pedals in there. The judges also like to see that. Opposite double tail up, not an easy trick. It's just awkward, there's no other way to explain it. He made it look real easy, linked it into that 360 tail up, which he actually had to over spin a bit on, because that's a hip. So a carefully crafted run here, linking his regular tail up variations to his opposite. That's what we've come to expect from Simon Pagez. But it's great to see him stomping this run after the crash last year. Backflip, opposite tail up. He kicked that with his front foot. You have a little less leverage kicking tail ups that way. Didn't seem to affect him. Well, what will the score be for Simon Pagez out of France? Good to see him get two clean runs in after his hard slam here last year in his first run. Now the judges, you see them taking their time with this one. They're probably trying to figure out which, there were a lot of tail ups in that run. Which ones were opposite? What was he doing them on? Exactly. Now, if he didn't get that 360 tail up in there, there would have only been opposite tail ups. Wouldn't do much for him. But when he does both, that's when you start getting the extra points. We well, see Pierre Edward Ferry there, Jeff Gulovich, Grant Chopper Fielder, all former competitors in their own right. Pierre still rides Rampage. 
And then back there, shaking the piece of paper, cracking the whip, keeping all these guys in line. That's Paul Rack, your head judge. And even though sometimes we'd rather get the score in right away, it's great that they spend this time making sure that the right decisions are made. Not an easy job, but these guys have a pretty stern formula of what they're looking for out here. Yeah, it used to be a little bit more free form, but now that this sport has really come into its own, they have a formula for these scores. And they have judging clinics, making sure that everybody who finds himself in that judging tower is fully capable and ready to do it when it counts the most. Paul Rack responsible for kind of molding this sport of slope style, turning it into more of an Olympic type sport. So for all of you pink bike commenters out there who like to weigh in, hey, go ahead and do so. We love to hear that. But yeah, you haven't done the training yet, so I'd like to hear your rationale. Wacky designs, anything from you? He's always commenting, isn't he? Tick tock, tick tock. Really taking time with this one. What do you think it is that's holding them up so much, Ty? I think they're just thinking about all the opposite tricks that he did. He had flip combos, he had spin combos. Well, we might as well take a look back and see what they're seeing. What parts of this run have them scratching their head, twiddling their pencils? Now they have a chance to review some footage. So my guess would be that they're looking back to see which direction some of those tail ups were. All right, well, let's see what they're seeing right now. This was the run we just had from Simon Pejas out of France. 360 double bar spin on the step down. Now bar this is there. probably something that they're really wondering about. That's a smaller trick than what a lot of other people have been doing on that second feature. Right. So that was an opposite double tail up there. Well, they're right beneath us. We can just tell them that was an opposite. So he had a couple straight bar spins in there. Used to be okay to kind of use those for All filler. Right. Well, here's our graphic. It looks like we may have the score in. There we go. A 77.75. He does improve. Top five score for Simon Pejas. He looks to be happy with that. Solid run. And we're here to talk about a little bit the Kelly McGarry Foundation. So as we know, Kelly McGarry, absolute free ride and slope style legend. A few of us riders, or a few of us riders, well, I remember him in my way. Nikolai Ragakin wearing his jersey, remembering him in his way. Wearing it every single time he competes here in Rotorua. <laughs> Nikolai, how did Kelly impact your life? Oh, Kelly was such an influence on all of us. I mean, such a legend. It's the, uh, it's the least I could do wearing his jersey. I mean, his spirit clearly lives on. Every year the vibe here is, un is unreal. You we know he's watching down, and we're trying to make him proud. So, uh, yeah, Magaza forever. Let's make him proud, Rotorua. Give him a hand. <laughs> Magaza forever. It's true, you can feel him here. He just had such an aura about him, just a positive guy, a guy who always was willing to send it to. So you know he's proud of these guys, putting it all out on the table, doing whatever it takes to score big here. The kick off the 2018 season, Crankworks Rotorua, in memory of Magaza. So now we have Diego in the gate. My opinion was his score seemed a little bit low. So I don't know if he was frustrated with that, but we're gonna see what he's gonna bring to the table for run two. I'm with you on that, Tyler. He had unique tricks. He had very difficult, unique combinations on really tough jumps. How is he going to improve? Backflip table on the step down there. Now, this guy's got a lot of tricks. Front flip, bar spin on the shark fin step down hip. Backflip tail up. Able to recover. Came up a little bit short. Cash roll on the hip. Where did he find the speed? Cam, he's got a good run going so far. Diego says, all right, judges, you want to see something? Here it comes. Flat flip on that drop. What's he got on the last two features? Front flip, tuck on no hitter no to Manuel on accident. Oh, a twist oh, Where did that, that come from? Yes, Diego oh Cavazzotti with a twister of his own <laughs> no. on the jump where that trick was first landed in competition. Well, Diego called my bluff. Nikolai did it earlier, and I said he's going to be the only one we're going to see do that. I was right there with you. I would not have bet against that, but never bet against 
it's Diego Caverzasi. All right, judges, let's see if he can get what he deserves for that run right let's there. That was amazing. Let's see the score and let's see the replay. So this right here, the front flip bar spin on this feature. I can't explain how awkward that feature is to trick. It's a hip, it's a step down. <laughs> Now that there almost threw his whole run away. You could actually hear him saying, whoa, 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 trying to hold it together. That was one of the most exciting things I've seen in a long time. I was and not, that's saying a lot. I was not expecting Diego to do a twister there. He's been putting in some work this winter. Such a solid rider. Look at him wind up for that front flip in here. That was a, a lot of question of marks. <laughs> one, two, three, cork 1080. Nikolai named it the Twister, the first one to bring it to competition. You know, I would have been so proud of him just for trying that, but he landed <laughs> it and it was perfect. <laughs> Look, he's even surprised. <laughs> I bet Nikolai was stoked to see somebody else doing that trick too. Diego's seen how well it scores for Nikolai. You can read his lips. Are you serious? Are you kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, it's so easy to root for this kid. And it's great to see him doing so well. I'd say he's been semi underrated in the past and this might be his big breakout. Well, here comes the score for Diego Carversazzi. We thought he was underscored in run number one. What does he have now? All the way up to second place, a 90.5. Oh my. Let's send it down to Michaela Gatto who's standing by. All right, you just moved into second place. That was an insane run. I don't think any of us were expecting that twister at the end. When, how, how many times have you landed those? Uh, this was my first try ever and the first time landing it. <laughs> oh my gosh, in competition, that is absolutely amazing. Diego, you just moved into second place. Congratulations. Thank you, Miguel. <laughs> Yes, Diego! If you're gonna land that trick, now's the time. I mean, these replays, these head-on shots, you can see the expression on his face as he squeezes out oh. that rotation. Look how surprised he is right here. First time landing <laughs> that trick. Oh my gosh. Well, I'd Evo. say he's pretty good under pressure. Evo, you gotta be jumping up and down right now for this guy. I wonder what Nikolai's thinking right now. Oh man. All right, all right. Let's take a look at our full leaderboard right now. In third place, bumped down by Diego was Nikolai Rogatkin. Diego, of course, occupying that second spot. We just saw that 90.5 and still in the lead. Brett Reeder with a 94.25. Still a healthy lead, but the energy is high here right now, and you know what happens when that's the case. Now, Nikolai's gotta be thinking, man, you took my trick, but you also took my spot. Now he's in third. He doesn't like sitting there. Oh no, back Nikolai in a corner and watch out. Well, let's carry that momentum right into our next rider. One of the most exciting things happening right now in the world of slopestyle mountain biking in his first Crankworks appearance from Germany, Eric Fedko. 360 tail up on the step down there, almost missing a foot, able to get it on. Calm and collected, just getting a 360 on that jump. Backflip double bar spin. We saw him get a good run in, but he's all the way down in 11th right now. 360 tail up the table, so adding a little style to that one. Double truck driver on the cannon. He knows he missed something, so he has to squeeze it all in now. That was an opposite 360 up, getting an oppo in there, regular three down. Flat spin on that long one. This kid rides with so much style. Another flip whip, perfect the pedals. Stop! I haven't seen this A lot of things kid. in that run that are improvements. Minor things that you can criticize, we'll go over that in the replay, but are you impressed by the composure out of this young rider? I've just never really seen him make a mistake. He never gets sketchy. I had a lot of fun watching him ride in practice, and the whips that he was doing on this big step up are some of the best whips I've ever seen. And that's not really a mistake. He still spun that jump, which is tough to spin. He had a double truck driver on it in the first run, but he picks up right where he left off, adding that tabletop from that 360 tail whip. Double truck driver on the cannon, getting a triple combo in there. Opposite 360 on, and then a regular three down. Flat spin there, I like the way he rolls that. So stylish on all of his tricks. Take a look at how early his feet connect to those pedals. He's already back on and in control. He's so far away from the landing still. Now this kid's new on tour. New on tour, but I have a feeling he's not going anywhere if he keeps this up. The score in a 69 for Eric Fedko, not going to improve, but placing 11th.
Well, Fedko looking a little frustrated, but the crowd behind him giving him a round of applause. Score seemed a little low. He's a new guy, so maybe the judges have to figure out what his riding style is. Well, this guy is definitely not a new guy. He's been around for so long, even though he's still pretty young. He's been on the tour since he was 15 right now. We're talking about Canada's Anthony Missouri. Backflip tail up on the step down. Whoa! Then a little crooked, his tire stayed on. Flat spin on the shark fin. Front flip, tuck no hander on the step up. This kid goes so much higher than everyone else out there. Double tail up on the hip, not looking back. Oh, and there goes Whoa. his tire. Oh! Come on, he didn't even do anything wrong. Such a bummer. His tire must have just been barely holding on from that under rotation on, or over rotation on that step down flip whip. That had to have been what it was. We were surprised that the tire stayed on there, but this is how it works. The tire slips off the rim, the rubber part separating from the metal. So this is what did it right here, I think. Slight over rotation. You can see the dirt flying. Can you see the tire wobbling yet? That's what you're gonna look for. He must have been wondering that whole run, is it gonna stay on? Luckily where it did blow out, wasn't in a dangerous spot. Now that could have happened on the on off and he would have had to ride off that thing with a flat tire. Here it was, right as he's entering the cannon, Actually, but he still threes it with a flat tire. I didn't realize it blew <laughs> off while he was on the takeoff. <laughs> oh, That's come commitment. on, give him points for that. Now it's hard to do a 360 even with low tire pressure. These guys usually run somewhere around 60, 70 PSI. He had zero, and he was doing probably the most difficult trick to do with low tire pressure. Anthony's mind game is really, really good this year, and that just shows how committed he was to that run. That didn't even get him offline or didn't even skip a beat on that 360. Anthony Missouri, eyes on the prize. Another guy who's already collected some prizes out here earlier in the week. You're looking at Thomas Lemoyne cleaned up on the pump track earlier with a great run in run number one. He's currently sitting in fifth place. So he's already got a top five, but he's gonna try to clean it up a bit. Double truck driver, 360, tuck no hander. Still not pedaling. Backflip, tuck no hander to bar spin. Watch the pump that he gets in between jumps. Getting all of his variations, these are so technical. 360 yeah. tail up on the cannon, perfectly smooth. Fun flip onto the cabin, crowd favorite. 360X up down, coming in no a long A truck driver, we haven't seen that from him yet. What's it got on the last jump? Backflip, Back double, double tail whip! Tail whip. Yeah. <laughs> wow, we saw him do that trick last year, so I was wondering if he's gonna pull it out again. Almost missing pedals, but able to just clamp onto the cranks, keep his feet from hitting the ground, and the judges shouldn't dock him too much for that. Well, when skill, talent, and strategy all combine, you get Thomas Lemoyne, the guy who's unshakable under pressure, strategizing a run that was such a banger in run number one, but who knew he had more in the tank? So smooth. Sometimes you wonder if he makes it look too easy. 360 tuck no hander. Doesn't even look like he's trying. He's just so smooth. Now you see riders absolutely sprinting in those flat bottoms, but never Thomas Lemoyne. He's a big guy. He uses that momentum to his advantage. Real strong pump. Now you can take a lot of big guys, but they're not gonna carry speed like Thomas Lemoyne. How important is it where he puts that body weight in those transitions? Well, it's just the skill of everything that he's learned. Uh, I believe he grew up racing BMX and that's carried him a long way, long way. He won pump track the other night, didn't pedal once down that course. So that right there, backflip, tail whip, doesn't catch it. Throws another tail whip in, so. As soon as that first tail whip wasn't caught, we knew we were in for a different situation. We are going, all right, he might improve a little bit. Yeah, we knew something else was coming around. But that's exactly the thing he needed to do to make the judges scratch their heads a little bit. Two tail whips while upside down. This kid loves getting tattoos from everywhere he travels. I believe he has a kiwi on his leg, a kiwi bird that he got here a few years ago. Well, this world tour means a lot to these guys, so they collect, some collect souvenirs, some collect tattoos. But this is kind of the time of their lives right now when they're on the top of the world. Speaking of the top of the world, look at that guy, Brett Reeder, sitting there looking at what he may have to do in his run number two. But the judges, a big task on their plate right now, assigning a score to that run we just saw from Thomas Lemoyne. Tyler, if you were a judge, I know you probably would never want to do that because it's such a tough job, but where would you put him right now? It's so hard to say. He's in fifth right now. All the runs we saw in the top three were so insane. I think he, I think he might bump up. 
I think we could see him in fourth. I'm not sure if that'll surpass Nikolai. So we're wondering if he's going to be able to make it onto the podium right now. Now he's going to be collecting a lot of points for King of Crankworks already with a win in the pump track. Waiting for the score. Here it is. Thomas Lemoyne currently sitting in fifth. He needs to better. He gets an 89.75. Good enough for third place. Currently in podium position. Wow. Well, the podium shakeup just keeps happening. Let's take a look at our top riders right now. So Nikolai down in that fourth spot. He does not like sitting there. He doesn't like being anywhere other than first. Thomas Lemoyne able to knock Nikolai out of that spot. Diego knocked him out of second. Now Diego's sitting there in second. We have three riders left. One of those being Brett Reeder, who's currently sitting in the top spot. If I could give you one piece of advice, I would say do not go anywhere. Nikolai Ragakin has a score to settle. Stick around. Welcome back, world. We're hanging out in the middle of the Pacific Ocean, the beautiful country of New Zealand, the beautiful town of Rotorua. You're looking at the downhill course. That race got underway this morning, and man, it was a great way to start the day. But now we look to be capping it off with one of the best slope style competitions we've ever seen. And in the start gate right now is the Belgian rider currently living in France. The last European rider to win a Crankworx slope style event. I had a chance to catch up with him on his new training facility. He showed me that it's way harder than it looks. Check it out. It looks like a killer layout. Who built this for you? Alex Dropsy, Marcus Umper were the main builders. The guys who build the Crankworx courses most yeah, of the time. Yeah, yeah. It took like quite a little bit of time to make it exactly how we wanted, like to make everything run smooth and make the perfect yard. Oh, oh my goodness. He has the best looking cash rolls too, I'm pretty sure. So like a cash roll is something that I would love to be able to do, but I can't even picture it in my head. What is the trick? Okay, can you front flip? Yeah, man. Can you 360? Yeah, man. You just mix them together. Don't tell me that. I need more. Okay, let's skip the introduction. Get to know me on the vocals. I'll be worldwide. So nervous. Oh, so freaking nervous. Do a front flip, but with that. <laughs> Snap your front wheel. Like doing a little curve. Okay, okay. Oh, I don't think of the curve. Okay, okay. Imagine just a snap. Imagine that you've been doing cash roll forever. Okay. <laughs> That's a great piece yeah. of advice. <laughs> oh, yeah, that one. Whew. That's called land on your head and see a little star. Oh! Well, Tommy G, this is like one of the best backyard slope style courses I've ever seen. So thanks for having me out, man. Okay, one thing I learned there, I didn't learn how to cash roll, but I learned that having a training facility is one thing, and then figuring out how to use it, spending the time on there, the hard hours in the airbag and on the jumps to learn the tricks, good enough to get you on the podium out here at a Crankworx Slope Style stop. This guy has put in the time, Tyler. Tommy G rides every single day, and we're saying that a lot about a lot of these riders, but these days you have to. 
Well, he's currently sitting in fifth place right now, a score of 81.75. He's no stranger to the podium. He wants back on that podium. He's the last European rider to win a Crankwork Slope South Stop. He would love to do that again here today. Opposite 361 footed can. Tail up on the shark fin. So I think it's the same run we saw him do in the first run so far. A huge front flip tuck no hander. Getting a little more amplitude than the first run. 360 tail up to table. Opposite 360 tuck no hander. Double tail up on. Is he going to do a 360? Tuck no hander yeah. off. He is. We saw him do that last year. So now he has those both directions. Click. All tricky features. Last jump. Truck driver to tail it. Perfect. Uh, just slipping a pedal there, but it shouldn't hurt him too much. What a great run. It looked like it was going to be perfect pedals on that last jump. And then the heel slipping off just at the last second, squeezing in so many tricks, top to bottom on those nine features. He's not done riding yet. He's just having fun out there. Stoked to get that second run in. So a lot of opposite stuff in this run, Tyler. Yeah, he started out with that opposite 360 there. 360 tuck no hander is a trick that we don't see a ton of riders doing. It's a weird one, real hard to learn. He's doing them both directions on features that aren't easy to trick. Now that's the thing we're always hoping to see from him on the drop because he's the only guy doing it off a flat drop, the 360 tuck no hander. I was hoping we'd see him do it. So the fact that he linked opposite and regular 360 tuck no hands in the same run, the judges are really going to like that. It's the subtle things that make up the big score. It's how this trick relates to a trick that he did earlier. We had that opposite 360 tuck no hander off of the cannon. So now he's doing it off of really tough features too. He's not doing it off of straight dirt to dirt trick jumps. Truck driver to tail up. He got his feet on perfect. Just a little heavy on the heel there. Now Thomas Janon looking to improve on an 81.75 from the first run. Still putting on a show for the fans out here in Rotorua. He can't get enough. And what will the judges say about that run? Will it be enough to improve from where he currently sits in fifth place position? Thomas Janon in the form of his life after battling with injuries, but looking so strong now. That backyard training facility definitely paying off. The score coming in all the way up to second wow. place. 91.5, another podium shake up here. Thomas Janon answering back saying, I want a piece of that podium. Our top five runs have been so stacked. He got pretty close to Brett there. Brett's looking a little worried about this guy right here. Huh. Nikolai Regakin in the gate. This will, is a little reminiscent of Innsbruck. Will we see a 1440 maybe? Well, we spoke to Nikolai Regakin earlier. Let's hear what he had to say. Every single rider out here has their own, you know, skill set and your, their own things that they're good at. I hugely respect guys like uh, Brandon and uh, Brett for their progression of the opposite tricks. I mean, that's just so difficult. Me personally, I have uh, quite the advantage and quite the skill of, uh, you know, adding rotations, adding tail whips, and, uh, you know, those, those crazy rotational tricks that, uh, that really uh, get the crowd going. That's, that's what fuels me, and I have more of the motivation to learn that rather than spending the, uh, the grueling time landing those uh, not so spectacular but almost even more technical and difficult opposite tricks. So, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's just adapting to your skill set and trying to do the things that you're most stoked on and the things that are going to make uh, the fans most stoked and uh, hopefully the judges most, most stoked at the end of the day. Well, look inside the helmet of Nikolai Regakin saying, I want to learn those tricks to get the crowd going. I know he does this just as much to the crowd as he does himself, and right now not sitting in a position he's comfortable with. He's sitting in fifth place. Look at that look on his face. He's going to bring some crowd pleasers. He's got to pull out all the stops right now. Backflip bar spin on the step down. Oh. Double tail if that thing came around so slow. I was worried he wasn't going to get back on. He twister. gets the twister. A cork 1080 rotation on the step up. Oh, he's on a good one. Some flip, tuck, no hander. 360 oh. tail up on the cannon, coming up a little short, but maintaining speed. Back flip on. Oh, man, please make it to the last jump. You never know we what he's going to do. we got to see this. Another front flip, tuck, no hander. What is it going to be? One, two, three, four. Going for the 1440. Just took a little bit too much speed. Going down hard. 
Nikolai Ragakin laying it all out on the table. You'd expect nothing less from this guy. Man, he was pulling out all the stops. He saw Diego do a 1080. He used to be the only person to do it. He said, you know what? I got another spin. I'm going to do a 1440. I just hope he's all right from that. Nikolai Ragakin, the only rider in the world who's ever landed a front cork 1440 on a mountain bike, and he's up, appearing to be healthy but just so devastated that he didn't land that run. Of course, that means Brett Reeder will be your champion, claiming the first gold medal of the 2018 Crankworx Slope Style World Championships, getting high fives from his fellow competitors and a huge smile on his face. Well, we have to take a look back at that run from Nikolai Ragakin as he sits down so disappointed but he can't be harsh on himself for not going for it. So he knew he had to pull out all the stops. He almost threw it away right there. I don't know if that was intentional, but that was the slowest double tail we've seen him do on that feature. Now a that would have been 1080 a, mid run. That would have been a 1080 and a 1440 in one run. That would have been a first. Seven spins on two jumps. Jeez, when Makes you put no it sense. like that, it just sounds impossible. It sounds like we're calling a snowboard or a skiing event right now. Front cork 1440. And here it is. Look at the wind up. He was sprinting into that, maybe trying to get a little extra air time to spin around four times. Maybe that jump's a little bit smaller on ones that he's done it before. We saw him do it at district ride on a big jump. So I think he was trying to get in as much speed as he possibly could. Now if this jump was just a tiny bit bigger, he would have had it. He got the rotation around. He was just leaning a little bit sideways. Weight distribution a little off. A little bit more hang time would have meant the world for Nikolai Ragakin. Going down hard on his shoulder there. He landed more than halfway down that landing. Oh, man, he's going to go to sleep sore tonight, but he's going to know that he gave it his all. But Brett Reeder is going to have a lot to celebrate. Not the way that Brett wanted to win, but a well-earned win for Brett Reeder in the first stop here at the Crankworx World Tour. Well, Brett Reeder starting the season off the way he had hoped to last year. He didn't make this event last year. He was still recovering with an injury. There's Harrison Mendel following Brett Reeder's entire recovery story as he trains for this season. And now whatever episode this comes out in is going to be a great way to continue the story. A story we'll be tracking the entire season this year as we head to Innsbruck, Leger, and of course we finish off in Whistler. Well, Nikolai Ragatkin right there, thinking about what could have been, but now a very special moment. We usually start out the event with a tribute to Kelly McGarry, a train, all of his friends and former competitors dropping in in honor of Kelly McGarry. And now Brett Reeder is going to ask all of his fellow riders to join him in his victory lap and celebrate Kelly McGarry. Come on up. So this one's for Magaza. This one's for Kelly, yeah. He just said it right there. This one's for Magaza. This one's for Kelly. The big man above. Is everyone up here? No. <laughs> no, but it's about to pass down, so. What's that? It's about to pass down. Oh, okay. Yeah, copy. Wait, you guys are ready. Okay. Fuck yeah, it. guys. Yeah, See you down there. Out of the way. Go, 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 go. Yeah. There we go. The crowd is going to love this one. There's nothing more entertaining than watching 20-some slopestyle mountain bike riders rip down the course in close succession. We call this a train. Look at all the cars on this train. Now, the conductor being the winner of this event, Brett Reeder. Oh, this is so cool. Got to be a good feeling for Brett. He just won. He's leading down the Magaza train. Oh, still doing huge tricks. Quick sound with a flat spin, Eric Fedko. This Sorry, one's for you, Kelly. Kelly. <laughs> Kelly, good friends with all these guys, and he'd be so happy to watch these guys ride this course that he originally built. Kelly's motto in life, it's a party on a bike. And what better party than all these guys ripping down together? These are the moments that Kelly loved the most. There we have it. The Magaza train, an obligation at any Crankworx Road Real Slope style in memory of Magaza. Brett Reeder walking away with the win and sharing that win with everybody here. All right, it's time to set things down to Michaela Gatto.
absolutely amazing win here today, Brett. Recovery win. Recovery win. It seems to be working for you. Yeah, you just got to put the work in, I guess. And uh, yeah, you're backed up in the contest uh, by the work you did. So um, yeah, it feels really good that it paid off. I think you. I think Kelly's uh, watching over you, being pretty proud right now. For sure, this was like the worst weather day that we could have asked for on on the weather forecast, and uh, somehow it was sunny all day. So I have a feeling he's part of it. Big thanks to the big guy, and congratulations, Brett Reader, your current winner here today. We're going to run Craigwork Slow Style. Yeah, Brett Reader. Well, we're taking a look at a replay of his winning run. Now at that point in time, we were saying, you know, any one of these tricks that he did on any of these nine features could be considered a highlight. If you just take that one piece out and select it as an on its own source of entertainment, but linking it all together, that's how you win a stop on the Crankwork Slopestyle World Championship Tour. The scary thought there is that we saw Brett do an opposite double tail up in practice that he didn't even get in that run. He had more. That's the crazy thing. Now, Nikolai Regatkin wanted in the worst way to force Brett Reader into giving all that he had. But right now, look at our leaderboard. Nikolai Regakin sitting there in fifth place. That's the lowest we've seen him in a long time when he stomps a run. Thomas Lemoyne, fourth place. Diego Carverzasi getting on the podium. That's his first podium in a Crankbrook Slope Style event. Just slowly cr climbing the ladder after that fifth place he got in Joyride. And of course, down the way, Riders just getting those points, hoping to stay on tour. Max Fredrickson, unfortunately, gonna have to rehab again. But after watching this, I would say you'd have to get your head examined if you weren't excited to tune into the next stop of the Crankworks FMBA Slopestyle World Championship. We're gonna be hitting Innsbruck later this summer. This whole week is gonna be action-packed full of events. It's so unique having a gigantic city in this alpine environment. Nobody has any room for air here. This is where he's gonna shine. Pretty Nick and Nick here. Caroline's looking good, she's gonna take it. The crowd was awesome. Must feel like I'm back at Olympic. This is unreal. Just sending us to the moon. It's so sick. What a huge run. We could have a new leader here. Oh, <laughs> Of course, join us June 13th through the 17th. It's Crankworks Innsbruck. It'll be the second stop on the Crankworks World Tour, the second stop on the Crankworks FMBA Slow Style World Championship Tour. And if that was any indication, this is going to be one heck of a season. I'm going to be there, you're going to be there, all these guys are going to be there. And if you can't be there, tune in, watch it on your TV. <laughs> little nipple flick from Brett to Tommy G right there. Let's take a look back at our podium finishers right now. Impressive performances out of everybody. Now Diego Caverzasi. So stoked for this guy right here. He really stepped it up in his second run. Bringing such unique tricks and so many surprises. He had the front flip Superman on the last jump and run number one, and then he blew minds with this. Only one of two people in the world to do this right here. 1080 rotation, Nikolai calls the twister. And you know, this was a big reason why Nikolai tried that 1440. He's saying, I'm not the guy spinning the most right now. I gotta add an extra 360. And this guy right here, second place, always a consistent threat, linking so many tricks that relate to each other on this course, balancing it out, Thomas Janon. 360 tuck no hander on that flat drop there, also getting an opposite one on the cannon. I think that's what put the nail in the coffin and got him on the podium. Ambidexterity right here, and big bangers to finish things off. This 360 bar spin to tail up. Stomped those pedals and then it slid off, but his run was so good that it didn't even hurt him. Second place for Thomas Shannon. But then it's all about this guy right here, Brett Reeder. That right there was an opposite 360, opposite bar spin to regular tail whip. Three tricks, two of them opposite and one jump. Two bar spins in one 360. One of the bar spins being opposite, the 360 being opposite. So much style on that flat flip, one-footed can. And then it wouldn't have meant anything unless he landed this trick. So, 720 bar spin. We asked a couple questions at the beginning of the show. We were wondering if we would ever have a repeat winner here. 
and if we would see somebody not North American walk away with a win? Well, the question was answered, and the answer to both of those questions is a resounding no. Brett Reeder repeating on his win out here, once again, wowing the crowd in Rotorua, New Zealand. Well, it's time to give out some hardware right now. A hard fought battle. Now these guys are gonna walk away with some medals, some prize money, and of course, some valuable points kicking off this world tour. Look at Diego, this is his first podium in a Crankworx Slope Style event. He had a fifth at Joyride last year, and that was a huge breakout moment. And he's just carrying that momentum into this season. He's going to be a huge threat if he keeps this up. Man, he worked hard for that. His first time landing a 1080, does it in his second run, and now he's standing on a podium. Talk about working hard, too. He still works at a bike shop. He lives in Italy. He commutes to Switzerland to work in a bike shop in the offseason in between events. And this guy right here, full-time slope-style training in his backyard. He's earned it. The first guy, the last guy, the last European to win Crankworx Slope Style event. In memory of Magaza for 2018. Make some noise for Brent Reader! Much deserved win for that guy right there. Not the way he wanted to win. I know he wanted to see Nikolai get that run. But man, he worked hard for this as well. Riding so well all week. All of these guys, look at these three, all of them earning it. Diego works, Tommy G, he's been fighting hard through injuries. Same could be said for Brett Reeder, just barely crawling back in time to win the first event back. Time and time again, these guys impressing us. So happy the weather held out. Let's take a look at the rest of the leaderboard here. Fourth through 14th. Now this is the first event of the World Championship, so our results from today will be our current standings in the overall World Championship hunt. Brett Reeder leading the charge. Tommy G and Diego second and third respectively in the world rankings. Now that was a long event, but this is the start of a long season. So a thousand points rewarded for a win in a slope style event, 900, 800, the list goes down. Ryan Nyquist picking up 512 valuable points. You know, just always doing what he needs to do to stay on the tour. Same could be said for Anthony Mazzeri, but Thomas Lemoyne just barely off the podium here. But a lot of points for the King of Crankworx overall for Lemoyne as well. Well, look at the champagne stairs there as Brett Reeder gets his shower. Now, you've done this before, Brett. You should know how to take the lid off of champagne and spray it all over second and third place, not your first rodeo. These guys are gonna smell like victory as they're packing their bikes tonight, B.O. and Champagne. Those two on the left, pretty familiar with podiums. Diego, pretty excited to be on there for his first Crankworx podium, I believe. Well, let's keep the action rolling. If you like slope style mountain biking, we'll keep it locked on Red Bull TV, because we have more action to come. Take a look. Well, if you're liking what you're seeing here, make sure to tune in for the next event on the WRC calendar. It's the Rally Corsica, the fourth stop on this series. This course is the never-ending sequence of turns, which earned this event the nickname Rally of 10,000 Corners. You're not gonna wanna miss it. Well, the only thing I can say is wow. What a way to kick off this season. If that's any indication, this first year that we have the Crankworx FMBA Slope Style World Championship is gonna be the best yet in the sport. Everybody's at such a high level. The stuff they're doing in practice is what you would have seen in finals in years past. That was insane. Like we said before, we only get to see these guys compete at a level like this four times a year. So luckily we get three more times this year. We got to see what they've been working on all winter. And that was a better show than I could have possibly imagined. If you just sat through that whole broadcast and you're not a fan of slope style mountain biking yet, you got to get your head examined because this is one of the best sports out there. These guys pushing the limits of what's possible on man's greatest invention, the bicycle. Aerial acrobatics at its finest. Competition head to head, friendly camaraderie. It has it all. For one Michaela in the field and two McCalls in the booth, we thank you for tuning in to Crankworx Rotorua Slopestyle in memory of Magaza. We'll see you in Innsbruck.